Nothing so, like good old Kentucky bourbon. Man. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta whisper that in Tennessee just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna hate knock at your door right now. <laughs> no, it's hard to beat. Justin, man, how have you been? Great. I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm I'm blessed. Yeah, man. You've been busy. Super busy. So yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. you know, we had this little thing we done up in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And um so I guess since you came back from there, what what's been keeping you busy after the show? Well, that's a man. That is a it's a hard question to answer because it's very uh, loaded. But um, you know, when I came back from the show, I had a hard time transitioning. I don't know what it was like for you all, but um, I went through a little bit of a lull just from the traumatic experience of the show. A lot of people don't realize that you know you see the show and you can kind of see some of the suffering we went through, but it doesn't really hold a candle to what we actually really did. And you can see throughout the show how much we suffered as far as how much weight we lost. Mm. For me, that was a hard thing to come back to. Um, But it was about three to six months to where I finally got back up on my feet and kind of felt like mentally I could kind of get back into my routine, just trying to figure out what I was going to do. But when I first came back, the one promise I made to my daughter was that you know, when daddy's back, I'm going to take her down to Disney World. Win or lose, we're going to Disney World. Because the time away from my child was hard on her and it oh, was yeah. hard on me. It was hard on all of us to have children. Yeah, hardest thing for sure. So, you know, getting back into the groove, it wasn't um, it wasn't something that was uh, easy to transition into. So that took a little work. And, um, you know, with good support and good friends, good family, I was able to kind of get back on track. And I'm not the type of guy that kind of falls into depression. Mm. Um, I know it is a thing and people suffer from it, but I consider myself to have a strong mindset. I think we all do being out there and enduring what we did. But, um, you know, having a little bit of a break instead of just going right back into work and right back into the routine, because I probably just would have rejected it and been a little sour. But uh, over time, I was able to kind of get my my groove into the following year and um, starting to work. What really helped me was to get back on the mat and start training jujitsu because that's kind of an area where I can just let everything go. Yeah. The mats don't lie, um, you know, so exercise is very therapeutic. And for me, that was one thing that helped me transition back to just like my normal routine, you know, because I obviously we all suffered as far as weight loss. I mean, for me, I lost a, a little over 25 pounds oh. and on my frame, that's a lot. That is, yeah, yeah. Sure. you know, for someone, my build, I'm five foot five, you know, uh, naturally walk around about 140, 145 pounds, but I tried to beef up, try to fatten up for the show. And is that what you went out there at one, about 145? No, I was a little heavier. I was about okay. 150 something. I think I weighed in like 153. Okay. Uh, and you know, it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to put on weight fast when you're used to just oh, absolutely, being, yeah. from, you have a high metabolism too. So yeah. from, from, from the looks of you, I mean, you're, you're ripped. Like well, you, you. you were out, you were ripped out there. Like you went out there pretty ripped. So that, yeah. that must've been hard to navigate the starvation, you know? Yeah. The, so. the physical side. Of, I mean, we were losing up. I lost 42 pounds. I lost a pound a day. Jeez, I, I was going to ask you that. How much you yeah, lost? Uh, uh, 42 pounds. Yeah. Pound, pound a day. Basically. I lost 35 pounds out there. 35. Yeah. But I, I have weight to lose. Like sure. I, I carry more weight on my frame naturally yeah. anyway. But yeah. I'm also a shorter guy like yourself. Mm-hmm. And I just carry fat a lot better than people, I guess. Yeah. Well, in, in that, in this situation, you know, that is actually, it can be an advantage. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, some people that, um, on the other side of that, like myself and someone like Jordan Williams, oh, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. I could tell just what little I could see across the river. And then, you know, unfortunately for those who have watched, so obviously no, but, um, I was worried about that too, oh, yeah. of me just getting to a point because I felt like I was losing about a pound a day yeah. and my body was going into ketosis where it was just eating itself yep. and I didn't really have the fat reserves that I really needed to. What I, what I should have done is been a little bit better prepared mm. and, and eating everything I could and carb oh, yeah. up and to get up maybe up to like 160 pounds, which is a lot oh, yeah. for my frame. It's I've never lot, been yeah. uh, that heavy for very long. Mm-hmm. The caveat to all that is when I did come back off of the show and... I weighed like 127 pounds. Oh, I was wow. light. I haven't weighed that much since I wrestled in high school. Yeah. And so I put all that weight back on Very in good. a fast period. And it was it was a shock to my body. So yeah. it was it was hard. But once I got past all that, to answer your initial question, uh, I got in my groove and I just started just doing what I normally had done. You know, I was yeah. I went back to shoeing a few horses, working as a blacksmith. But I a lot of people don't know that I'm semi-retired from that. 
And so being around the horses and being able to just kind of engage in that atmosphere actually helped. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I knew that's not where I wanted to be as a as a blacksmith or farrier yeah. anymore. I was moving on to bigger, better things with another business I started. Mm-hmm. So making that transition was was a difficult one. But once I did, I kind of found my groove and my happiness. And and man, it just it's been nonstop since. Yeah, you know, good yeah. deal for for me. <clears throat> like I couldn't get back into the the physical activities that I, that I was used to doing. I wanted to come right back. It was close to deer season. I couldn't. Mm-hmm climbing a tree stand like i yeah. mean i was out of breath real quick um i just chalked it up to a loss there was no way that i could do yeah to the normal rate that i would do it at so i just had to let that go um and just slowly try to build the weight back i'd lost i had um I think they call it socks and mitten syndrome yeah. i came back so i couldn't feel the tips of my yeah. fingers or yeah. my toes you too yeah uh yeah but um I, but more so than that you know, you, you mentioned um, mentally, you were mentally strong. I, I felt that I was. There was times that I broke oh, yeah. down, right? I'm pretty oh, yeah. sensitive guy. But I had more um, issues uh, getting on a level plane from a mental aspect than a physical aspect. Um, I think, and, and I think it's, uh, Nick would be fine if I share this, but he mm-hmm. and I both had some some uh, some real problems with, with connecting back to reality, even though it was, you know, less than 40 days. Yeah. We had kind of went through something there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, the mental aspect of that, that game was, was draining just a little bit, to be Absolutely. honest with you, oh, you yeah. know, every day you're, you're in your head, you know, even though you're with people, you're alone in your head way too much. Oh yeah. And then you're, you're fighting yourself on, is this the right thing to do? Should I do this? Should I not do this? How would this be looked on? Why are you here? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you, you were fighting with yourself and, and trying to find yourself out there at the same time. So it was hard for me to recover mentally when I came back. It, it took several months. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. I, I can totally relate, man. I, I went through something very similar and about the, uh, the socks and mittens. I, I've never heard of that, but what I was dealing with was very similar. And, and to me, it was a form of neuropathy where I had um, no feeling in my fingertips yes. for a long time. Uh, mainly my toes. Yes. And I felt like the frostbite, which was a mild version of it over a long period of time. Yeah. I mean, even to this day, I have, you know, something with my left big toe that's still just not, hasn't yeah, healed really. all the way. So, you oh, know, no there's, kid. there's the aftermath of yeah. that. And that could be from being on the mats. It could be just from a number of different things. It could be old injuries, horses stomping my feet, but <laughs> nonetheless, the, uh, the uh, amount of suffering from just little things like that, like not being able to get your feet warm, but just enough to where you're like kind of comfortable to sleep. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you just dealt with it. Right. Yeah. And so that's what we all did. You know, yeah. everybody on every team just dealt with the suffering the best way that they could and try to find that little bit of comfort in the discomfort. But yeah. what it sounds like you're saying too, is, is something that I said, I can't remember who I was saying it to. It might've been in an interview, but, uh, a part of me died out there, but yep. then yet another part of me was reborn. And 100%. I feel like you guys yeah. could relate to that. Yeah, right? for yeah sure. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I kind of had almost like a, I wouldn't say like a spiritual awakening, but I, I left a lot of bad, like just bad thoughts and stuff out there. Um, like nothing dark. Uh, my brother passed away about five years ago mm-hmm. and um, I, I left a lot of that grief i guess you could call, would say out there and that helped me in the long run so yeah i mean it, it it's a healing thing i mean yeah you're you're suffering while you're out there but it, it also heals you a little bit on the inside yeah I yeah think. for sure it's a, it's a detox of not yeah. only a physical detox but a mental detox for me it was yeah like i mean the same thing i had a lot of angst that i had to let go of and, and i had uh it, it don't, i don't want to pull in too much into religion i may have mentioned this before that you know, when I lost my mother, and my mother, for as long as I've known, she's you know she's been a golly type lady, but was in mm-hmm. church, raised us in church, and I'm like, how how would you take this woman? So, so I had a an, an issue with God, if you will, okay, um, to a point of agnostic at times, you mm-hmm. know, because it's, there's no way this could happen. So being out there and being able to connect with something, and to to actually, you know, there was times that that away from camera that I would actually ask the camera crew because I was with you everywhere. Yeah. I, I need about 15 minutes. Can mm-hmm. you just give me, a and they were, they gave me that and I appreciate that. So we were able to, I was able to talk, yeah. you know, and, and I was able to pull on that later on for strength. And, and it was a, a renewed relationship, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not, I'm not religious, I'm mm-hmm. not super religious. 
but I have it. And, mm-hmm. and I was able to rekindle that relationship there. So that was good for me. Okay. Uh, you know, when we're talking about a mental d- d- detox as well. Um, mm-hmm. So um, for me, it was more, the whole thing was more mental than physical. The physical part didn't bother me at all. It yeah. was, although the last little bit, it looked like I was, you know, you guys had to pull me along. I struggled more mentally than physically out there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, and that's, <clears throat> I think that's where, you know, the result that you all, that the end result was because of the mental strength, you know, like everyone was suffering physically, um, some worse than others, obviously. And to the point where, you know, like for instance, Angie, uh, I obviously didn't know her like you all did, but I could see just because one of the other women on the show, uh, and how strong these women were, you know, push come to shove, whether you like them or not, um, there is strength there to to be able to endure that because what the view in public doesn't know, is the true mind games that you kind of play with yourself when you're going through starvation and having to just cope and then just deal with other people. Oh, yeah. uh, also with your own mental hurdles that you're trying to overcome. Like, why am I doing this? Is it worth it? You know, yeah. I can make this super comfortable and just pull the flare gun out and quit. Yeah. Um, I, I listened to the podcast, you know, uh, episode one where you're talking about, you know, the only time you felt like you wanted to quit Yeah. and you telling that story was actually comical to me because like I had a similar, you know, situation at one point in time, like, man, I could quit this. And it was like the one, the first couple nights where we all just had, we're sleeping with our clothes on and, you know, and I guess Nick was in your lap and, and, uh, (laughs) you know, so I'm, but at the same time, like, Hey, that's how you bond with your brother. Even if you don't know him, all of a sudden, you know, you're on a team, like we're going to make this work and you have that cohesive unit, that bond. Yeah. And that helps, you know, you kind of pull each other through whatever it is. I I found out how much of a man Nick was like, and, and obviously like, that's not like a sexism thing or anything, but like, I knew he wasn't going anywhere after that yeah. night. Like he was in the fetal position, like shivering all night long. And I'm like, if, if he can en- endure that, that mm-hmm. level of pain, there's nothing that's yeah. going to take him out of this game unless it's a major injury. Yeah. So, yeah. To, to me, mm-hmm. it was, it's one of my favorite stories. And I, and I keep bringing it up. I love when you tell it. Cause you know, when you tell, I, I hear Nick in my head, he's like, yeah, dog. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. good dog. I'm here. And yeah. he was, he was there for the whole thing. And, and this guy is just, you know, he, he has that, that wrestling background. So already yeah. he's, he, He's forged in that lifestyle. Right. Right? He's, mm-hmm. He he can embrace the suck, if you will. Yeah, he, yep. he's that guy. But uh, I I think I, I kind of rushed ahead. And if it's okay, I'm going to drag this back. Yes, and, please. Yeah. And and let's start this thing from go. You know, yeah. we're 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 standing in a circle. And there's 16 people staring at each other. And here it comes. It's all right. Pick your teams. Absolutely. Yeah. And for for me, and I've mentioned before, we were just. The odd guys. So we were just standing there. No one picked us. So, um, but what we seen was, you know, there was Jill's narrator, mm-hmm. and you could see you you snatch I, her up pretty much. It's yeah. like I want you. Like yeah. so. Yeah. So if if you don't mind yeah, interjecting, uh, sure. what, what's going through your head right there at that that moment in time? So, just knowing from a brief conversation with Jill that she was from Kentucky. Um was kind of like, all right, we share that same commonality. And knowing that she had some skill, I, I yeah. could tell just from talking to her that she was a skilled archer, which that's going to help. You know, I feel like I'm a skilled archer as well, a uh, hunter. She was not a hunter, but she obviously proved that to be untrue. She yeah. was a hunter. Yeah. Um, so from a familiarity point of like, oh, someone from Kentucky, okay, someone who I know who's got a decent skill set just from a brief interaction, she was directly in front of me, Yeah, you know, without being awkward and like looking back, you know, <laughs> like shaking hands with your neighbor, I just grabbed a hold of her and then I felt someone grab a hold of me and pull me back, <laughs> which, <laughs> was, which was yeah. Lee, Yeah, and I kind of just briefly looked over and, you know, I, I didn't know who it was grabbing me and I'm like, oh, okay, this guy, and I didn't even know his name, yeah. but, uh, and then I look over and I see Amber and grabbing Jill. And so I'm thinking, all right, well, I guess we're a team yeah. Yeah. and, um, didn't think much past it really, other than the fact that, um, just the brief interaction that I had, we didn't really have a ton of interaction with, you know, everyone before yeah. the show, there were yeah. some conversations and I, I briefly spoke with you. I briefly yeah. spoke with Nick, uh, but not enough to really even, yeah, form there's no thought. bonds or anything yeah, out yeah. there. I'm like, point. okay, would this guy be a good guy? Like, based on appearance, you know, I mean, we're pretty much judging each other, you know, by yeah. appearance and like, you know, the cover of the of the book, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, you know, and and I knew you were 
from Kentucky or Tennessee. Yeah. But I think you and I maybe had a couple words exchanging that. It wasn't much. It might have just like, oh, you're Paul. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we, at that time, it wasn't even anything that would consider like, oh, well, maybe I should gravitate towards him or anyone else. It was just Jill was in front of me and I was close just by happenstance. Well, we, we had the, the bus ride over for the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> you know, so we had what? whatever the length of the photo shoot was. Mm -hmm. And, in you know, during the interview process in the photo shoot, we just small interchanges. So you kind of, obviously my accent gave it away and Jill's mm -hmm. accent gave it away. So, and then I, I think I'd heard that you were from Kentucky. So it, and I'm sure it's like that with any state, but there, there is a pull to that. Oh, absolutely. You know, so mm -hmm. you're like, Oh, that's, that's my brother. That's my yeah. sister. You know, they're K Kentucky. Yeah. And these are my people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I can see, and, and if you notice on the show, when it first starts, like I'm standing behind you guys, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting with my people. And they're like, no, you're not fat boy. <laughs> so I, I, go do the, I had to stand outside the line after that. But, um, but yeah, so, so, you know, we, we get in our four groups and we, and we take off and, and you see when the show opens up, I mean, right off, uh, you know, you guys hit hit the bank and you're starting looking for shelter. And it looks like there's a little bit of something between Lee and Jill, maybe like a jockeying for position. Is it, am I wrong on that? Like trying to see where we're going to set up camp. And yeah, then, we don't get to see much. We we don't get much interaction with your camp anyway because yeah, we're on the other side so of the river. Both, yeah. both of our teams starting out, we really don't know what's going on over there. We don't know the terrain over there. We know what's going on over at our camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, so. I, and I guess the question is, is is you, you see like you're on top of the hill, you know, and you're mm -hmm. like, hey, it's it's probably flatter up here, and then it's like, no, we, we're running out of daylight. Let's do it here. At at that time, was there was there anything that was popping up in your head? It's like, ah, oh, this we could be button heads here. You got all of these A type personalities, and mm -hmm. it's coming out right, mm -hmm. and, and it's not a it's not it's a bad thing, but you had that. Yeah, and I think you guys probably had three of those. I think Lee may have even been one. He wasn't on our long enough to really establish himself as one, yeah. but his background states that he is right. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, but you could tell off the bat that that you and Jill were both you both had that. So, was that an issue starting right off, or was it just it just it, it was what it was, and you were pressed for time? And yeah, it, it uh, there was a little bit of that. It, it's funny you recognize that, but it wasn't enough to really make it a thing. But you could tell it's going to show up later, yeah. uh, and I think the show obviously depicts that, and they kind of you know present it to be as what it is in the beginning. But I will tell you this: <clears throat> being able to see everybody's camp at one point in time or another. Yeah. And I'm not saying this just because for any sympathy or any, uh, you know, feel sorry for us, but being that I've been and I seen what Delta camp look like, I seen what Charlie camp look like, I seen what Bravo camp, Alpha camp. I think you're was, the only one who's actually been to all of them. I'm sorry, Dan, yeah, but the, you're the only yeah. one who's actually seen all all four camps. Yeah, in this, person. This was confirmed, and that's yeah. just not my word. But it, we did have the most challenging terrain to set up a decent camp. So that right there was the the kickstart. So what you're seeing is a start of, okay, how are we going to handle this? You know, and some people just, hey, let's just go ahead and set up camp here and let's just deal with it because where we set up camp the first night is not where we initially set up our camp for good. We had okay. to move down or rather up the river and, and, and set up in an area that was just a little bit better. So, you know, trying to find a, a good spot. I didn't even like the way our shelter was set up, yeah. me personally. It was something that was just like, okay, this is just a makeshift. We can probably make it better. But all we did was just kind of like polish a turd the whole time we were out there. Yeah. And um, we just made do with it. it. It worked and it was good enough. Uh, but in my mind, I wanted to construct something a little bit better, kind of like with the boat, you know, take oh, our time yeah. and, and make it to where it's going to be like, all right, this is going to be a much better situation for comfort however the temporary shelter and as it was and has how we uh, constructed it was just good enough for it to work would it have lasted through the winter no man not at all it i mean if you've ever watched alone you see oh, yeah. some of those people spend a lot of time on the yeah, shelter and sure. take and you got to have if you're in a team you got to have everyone on the same page and i think that's why you all shelter was was really good when i came over there uh at a later, and I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but I was just like, wow, this is like the Taj Mahal, <laughs> man, I, like, compared to what I came from. I had the same experience. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, when Jordan <clears throat> had went over and, and, and dropped in, and, mm -hmm. you know, he came back like, guys, they're not, it's horrible. They've got a little <laughs> lean to, it's bad. Yeah. And For like the I, first five days, it, all we saw, well, it was just a tarp under well, a, yeah. a ridge line, and that was it. Yeah. I think we were all pressed because of the weather, right? We had sure. to get something up quick to get out of the rain. So, 
and, and it's so easy to kind of get, I don't want to call it lackadaisical, but okay, I'm out of the rain. So let's, now we got to find food. And then you sort of forget, you sort of forget winter's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, right now it, the roof's, it's not raining, so you don't need to patch the roof, right? Yeah. Right. So, so we, and you get caught in that. And I think you guys were like, no, it's, it's coming. We're going to get on it. Oh yeah. By the fifth day, I was tired of being wet. I'm like tired of being wet and cold. I'm like, we're, we're getting in four walls and a raised bed, like a hundred percent. Huge, huge difference. You know, we, we, when I first walked into Charlie camp and I'm like, this is not the PP that I heard you had. This is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, but, but yeah, you know, um, just from across the river, we could look over and we really couldn't see what you all had. But now mm-hmm. that we were able to go back and, and, and watch the show and see what you were dealing with, um, you were, I mean, kind of, you know, you're kind of behind the eight ball already. You, you, yeah. you're, you're on an incline. You're, you, you yeah. don't have the best uh, layout for a camp. So it's already tough. Right. And I wonder if that kind of started you guys off with, with a heightened sense of aggravation, if you will, because you're, you're wanting, there's nothing, to, I mean, you have what you have and you got to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you, you think that started it off with, with, with high, um, I don't know if I'd call it aggravation or, or, or just you're, you're just, Oh my gosh, what, what am I, what are we going to do? What do we do with this? Yeah. You know, it, for me, it was, uh, I could tell that Jill was strong binded and had that leadership capability. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I have read a lot of books and I understand what leadership is and sometimes you can be the leader, yeah. but it's very important also that you can, submit to having to be the leader and to be led. Yeah. And so I pride myself in that to being able to like, okay, if someone else has a uh, position where they want to uh, take charge, even if I feel like I might be better than them at that, I'm going to let go of that ego, yep. right? This you is the to. dichotomy of leadership. And even if I know in my mind, I, well, I could do that a little bit better, but they're good at it. So let them lead. Yes. And, and that's fine. And, and a good leader, I think, will understand that. You know, Jocko Willink, the former Navy SEAL, mm-hmm. he talks about that in his books. And and so to your point, yes, Paul, there was that. Um, and so I try not to be combative with that. Yeah. I am t- at times like I'll take the lead and just, you know, do the damn thing. Uh, at other times, I can also try to s- sit myself back and, and be led. And I think that's that's actually a, being a good team player. One hundred percent. No, it's not. It's not just being a team player. Um, I had a chief warrant officer, and one of the best pieces of advice he ever gave me was, uh, "To be a good leader, you have to be a follower. Yeah. Like yeah. you have to learn how to follow." And I think some people out there ha- never learned that aspect yet. Mm-hmm. I was fortunate enough to learn it at a very young age, at nineteen years old. Like mm. I, you have to be able to take an order before you can give an order. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. considering like we're all. Like in the in the show says this, you know, oh, yeah. like I, I'm quoted saying it, but we're lone wolves. Yeah, I mean, yeah. essentially, and I have a hard time with. I, I don't really trust people very well. Uh, I, I trust myself yeah. And yeah. to a point, and then if I don't, if I can't, then I'm going to look for leadership. I'm going to look to like if we were on a team, you know, I'm like, okay, well, like when we went hunting, for instance, yeah. like you knew the area, you knew the terrain, you had come very close, which a show doesn't really show that yeah. of yeah. getting a, a buck or deer, and I'm like, okay. I'm following this guy's lead because yeah. he's already been out there. He's, he's been in the suck out there and then the musk eggs yeah. and uh, you know, like, where do you want me at? Yeah. Okay. Cause I know I, I know my skill set enough to, I can be uh, useful in an area that you know where the deer are moving. Mm, so in that situation, I'm not going to just come infiltrate y'all's place and try to like, okay, I'm a hunter too. So listen to me. Yeah. That's arrogant. My arrogant would get in the way of my ignorance. And so from a team standpoint, when not everyone thinks that way, yeah. Right. And yeah. I can't project the way I think onto everyone else. So I have to be mindful of my own arrogance and will to push on people. Um, it's, it's a hell of a learning of experience. It's a hell of a ride, it's, it's man. <laughs> man your, your, your patience was absolutely admirable. Like, oh, like, it's all, it was saint-like if you, oh, if for, you ask me. Um, yeah, for sure. So I, I'm, I'm not a patient person, honestly. I'm what? really not. No. <laughs> Come on, sir. And, um, my wife gave me like the best piece of advice I could have ha- ever had going out there. And, uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm much like you, like, I know I can do it. Mm-hmm. I want to do it to the best that I can. I don't, I don't know you, so I don't trust your ability yet. Right. But she's like, I went out there. She's like, Seth, not everyone is you. So I had to, mm-hmm. I had to stick that in my head the whole time. And it was, and, and I was, I was aggravated with everybody at, at a certain point. I, sure. I try not to show it. Sure. Um, you don't, you don't want to be aggravated with the people that you're, you're going to battle with. Like, right. you, this is what, what it is. It's a team. You're going to battle. 
just to sit back and like take take five seconds made a world of difference out there. Like instead, we, we if you looked at us, we didn't we didn't argue. We had like one little one little qualm, mm-hmm. and that got squished asap, and that was it. We didn't argue for the rest of the thing, and I think I think what my wife told me, like Seth, not everyone's you, played a big part in that for me mm-hmm. because I'm normally not as level headed. I, I do get aggravated pretty easily. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to do in a situation Absolutely. where you're starving and you're cold, cold and, and you're wet. miserable and yeah. it just, it, everything just sucks. Um, <clears throat> that is one thing I noticed about you and, and, you know, you were basically like on team Charlie, even with the, like the little spat between Angie and, and Nick. And I can totally see that where they're personalities would clash a little bit, oh, yeah. right? And they both are badasses in their oh, own right and, and can prove, you know, anybody wrong that wants to, you know, think otherwise. You are like the glue in Team Charlie to me, from my perspective. Whereas in Alpha, and I have to give credit to the girls because that's where Amber was. She was like the buffer between me and Jill. And one thing I will, I do want to say is that during the whole situation of building the, 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 the shelter talking about, you know, a raised bed, oh, yeah. like they put a lot of work into that. So okay. I have to give them credit for that. Okay. So they did make they don't me show that much comfortable. That. No. And so, you know, in, in some areas I could see like where the way the show is edited, it doesn't really look like, in my opinion, where I'm like pulling a lot of the weight. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I did that never made the show. And, and that's oh, yeah. for all of us, yeah, right? Doing well, different sure. stuff, yeah. like building more and putting it into the shelter, like the fire shelter for us, we had to build that because yeah the one day I was making the fire, like it just kept raining and kept dropping on the, every time oh, I get absolutely. a little flame going, I'm like, we've got to build a structure for our fire. And yeah. so, but, um, yeah, you were like the glue for Charlie that I saw, especially in that scene where they're, you know, trying to figure out who's going to be the best fit for going down or up river. And, um, you know, and then when you came over, Paul, it was like, it was just like a perfect fit, you know, oh, yeah. for all you guys. And, and you can't, really see that from the other side we don't really know and there's a lot of things that we didn't know because we're literally on the other side of the river so we yeah. don't really know the the dynamic between the other teams we just know what's going on on our side oh, yeah yeah and, and i think that's where a lot of a lot of uh the fans and viewers get confused is it's so easy to 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 forget or to not realize that we don't know what's going on over there yeah. and when you're watching that you're like oh how can they do that we don't know what's happening and, yeah. and we get bits and pieces that we can hear across the river, yeah. or, but you really don't have all of that. So you don't have all that info. So, you know, these are four separate entities working that mm-hmm. we know nothing about. Um, matter of fact, and we'll, and we'll bring this up, your, your, your swim across the, the, oh, yeah. the yeah. sleeping bag thing, man. That was <laughs> yeah, that, that's hard. Well, it, yeah. Hardcore. Um, so when, so first off, I, I guess I may be jumping ahead, but, but how hard, so so how much did you deliberate on that? Was it like, all right, this is the thing to do, and we just do it? Or was this something that you, you, you guys thought about for a while that you battled within yourself, and you're like, you know what, there's there's, let's move this game board along a little yeah. bit. It's within the boundary. Let's do this. That's exactly it. And, 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 you know, at that point in time, we had been out there for about two weeks, yeah. you know, and yeah. we pretty much trimmed the fat, like, with the people that dropped you know, not taking yeah. anything away from but, them because yeah, you had you had two guys from from uh colorado colorado, colorado go yeah. go like what tim and Corey. Yeah. they went with like second or third day or something something like, like that yeah. we, we didn't know we didn't get to see any of the flares mm-hmm. get shot we didn't know lee was gone like we knew andrea was gone because she was like the i i want to say she was the first one we don't know um so we think she was the first one to shoot her flare and then like later on we found out like three more people shot their flare and we're like you don't know who it is. We, yeah, well, we no didn't, idea. We didn't even see from. that because we're so tucked back in the in the holler back there. That, like, yeah, we, that's right. we had no clue. Or so we, we had a better advantage point from yes. that because we were at the the not the point, but like at the beginning of the river. Absolutely, yeah. Coming into you know, I guess the river mouth. Is so that's a huge be. morale boost. Like our morale got hit hard because we're like, oh, we lost somebody like right off Jump Street. Uh, they're gone. We're now viewed as the weakest team. Mm-hmm. You know, like we, we we're down. And we don't know if anybody else is down or not. So we're like, oh, well, all three other teams are killing us right now. So we just we just had to last until we could make moves. And I think I think y'all saw us make some moves down like day four or five, maybe mm-hmm. even six. Because yeah. 
I went out actively looking for other people to come to the team. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was headhunting. I actually, no offense, Paul. Why you always got to hurt my feelings <laughs> with this stuff? I, I got... No offense, Paul. Um, I, I pro- well, first I approached Jordan just because he's yeah. a brother. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, we, we were both in the Marine Corps, yeah, so absolutely. I'm like, I'm going to try to look out for mine. Uh, and that's no offense to anybody here. Mm-hmm. It's just alumni, you know. And then um, I actually immediately went went to you because mm-hmm. we did have like <clears throat> two words in passing pretty much. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, this guy's he's got to be good. You know, I know I saw your gear. I knew your gear was good. So I'm like, he has some kind of knowledge about it. And, uh, you, you told me you'd think about it. Yeah. Then, we uh, had a great conversation across the river. Yeah. Uh, and it's unfortunate that that didn't make the show because that was something I thought that they would highlight yeah. just leading into all the, the drama that unfolded and everything, the way it just, you know, came about. Uh, and at that time when we had that conversation, for those of you that don't know, uh, Seth was on the other side of the river and, I was uh, picking up buoys or something, yeah, or maybe it was netting. And, I think and, you were still working on the raft. Yeah, yeah. You, were, you were messing around with the net. Yeah, I, I was doing something, and, yeah. and you had mentioned something about that. And I'm like, hey, there's plenty for everybody. Yeah, you know. And at that time, I, that was my mindset. I'm like, you know, however this game unfolds, I'm not going to be the villain yet. I mean, I want to because you don't know. You yeah, don't absolutely. know who yeah. is going to be your your enemy, your friend of me, oh, or your friend. Keep your eye on everybody. <clears throat> yeah. So you know that option I kept open, and and you made an offer that I seriously contemplated. But at the time, I had no reason to jump ship, and I, I that was a loyalty check for yeah, me. Fair, like, okay, fair enough. Yes, you, you were so I mean? strong, right? And, yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. And, and I felt like I was in a good position. Yeah. There was no reason for me to leave. And that was probably relatively close to the time about before you were probably feeling the way you were. And yeah. and I totally understand that. I can totally relate. Um, but yeah, that conversation we had across the river, you know, yeah. like, hey, we got room for one more. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, at least I know I have a wild card over here. Absolutely. Yeah. If, but I, I don't know if that's going to close, you know, how long that's going to stay open. But yeah. I knew that that offer was there. Yeah. Uh, and that obviously was before the, um, you know, the start of the, the drama episode <laughs> oh, four yeah. going into, well, um, you know, the sleeping bag theft. I, I can tell you about that. Now, I mean, <laughs> again, a lot of people, I, I don't know why they're so emotionally charged. I, I do, right? It's very, yeah. it's a very emotional mm-hmm. show, right? And it's a great thing if they, if, you know, if the editors can, can touch you on an emotional level, they've done something great. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And they're, they're taking just thousands of hours of, of video and they're cutting it down to seven hours and they got to tell a story. Yeah. So, all this happened, right? Mm-hmm. How do you get there? Yeah. And how do you get there with the most entertaining way of doing it? And, and I, th- I feel like they've done a great job. What I think a lot of people's feeling to to click with or to realize right off, this is a game show for $1 million. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a, let's outlast until the end. It is, you want to outlast yeah. to the end, right? But it's no different than Survivor or anything else. It is a game. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And it's to be played as a game. And, and you know, a lot of people left early on. And then you know the people that's been after a couple of weeks, and we went through the worst of it right off the, the bat. Oh, absolutely. So these are hardcore people. Now, it's time to do something. And mm-hmm. you chose to do that. Yeah. And it, it's like, to, to me, it's, it's, it's genius, right? Yeah. Let's move something. It, yeah. it was in my head the whole time. Like, it was right in the back of my head. The only reason I didn't want to do it is because I didn't want to sleep with one eye open. And yeah. that's the only, that's that's literally like the main reason why I did not want to enact on that. Uh, is it is it messed up? Yeah. I don't think anybody's lives were actually yeah, in danger. A lot of people are like, oh, they could have died. It's like, no, they could have quit at any time. Yeah. What, I, what I feel like it is and what it was and, and the reality of it is, is it was the reset button back yeah. to zero. Yeah. We all went out there the first four, five nights, whatever it was, before our initial first or second drop, technically, yeah. before we were gifted with the sleeping bags. Everyone suffered. People were quitting the first few nights because it was cold. We were all wet. It was miserable. Some people's feet got wet and cold, and it's just like, this ain't for me. Uh, So, you know, those first couple nights, like I think the first night or two, I got maybe an hour of sleep. I had the worst headache on day two. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Just from not getting enough sleep and just being tired and having to cut wood and move camp and do all that. Second night, same thing. Just, Just miserable. Trying to cuddle up to your, you know, your teammates and in the military, as I say, nut the butt, just, oh, yeah. you know, you're huddling, you're, you're yeah, trying to stay warm. warm. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, the reality of that is that's where you're suffering. So taking the sleeping bags away, just for clarification, you know, it was a strategic move to push the game moving forward. Did I intentionally want to hurt anybody? No, absolutely not. It's like in Brazilian jiu-jitsu when I'm training, if I put someone in a choke, if they don't tap, they're going to go to sleep. If absolutely. I have their arm and I have them in an arm lock, I could potentially break that arm, yeah. right? Unless they tap. 
So you're, you're defeated mentally, psychologically, right? Mm. And then physically, and you're pretty much saying, okay, uncle, you've got me. Yeah. And that's the same strategic mentality that I had once that switch went off in my head. And so to kind of bring back to that, after we'd been out there, we trimmed the fat, most of everybody that's out there, like, you know, everyone that's out there now is the people that are meant to be there. Oh, yeah. And so now it's like, okay, in my mind, I want to play a game to where it's going to make people suffer a little bit, oh, yeah. not intentionally hurt them, because I don't feel like Don and Joel were ever in harm's way where it was life yeah. or death. I don't think that on the, on the production side and, and everyone involved wouldn't allow that to happen. But what it does do, hitting the reset button, button, excuse me, mm-hmm. when you're faced with hardship and you're like, man, this is super uncomfortable, I can pull yeah. a flare. Yeah. In my mind, that's what I wanted to do. So obviously that was the gameplay that I chose to do. Now, people criticize, oh, you're a thief, you're this, you're that. Sure, at that point in time, call me what you want. Yeah. Right now, would I steal anything? No. Mm-hmm. Before, the, before the game, no. Do I think stealing is wrong? Of course, yes. You know, I mean, people say, oh, you have no... You know, you're, you're morally, you're you're uh, a bad person, and you know you're a thief and a liar, and this and that. And that's you know people that are hating on me, and that's okay. It's to be expected because yeah. it does drive the emotion, right? People yeah, get so sure. in tune with this and so caught up. Um, I recently had a buddy of mine that just finished it today, actually on the way oh, wow. uh, yeah. up here, and he's just like, "Man, that's a great show. I can't believe the stuff that you did." But I could see why you did that. You yeah. know, he understands. He's oh, a, he's a former fighter. He's a former MMA fighter. My buddy Greg in Arkansas, yeah. and he he totally gets it. Uh, he says, but yeah, like outside in the real world, would you do that? No, I'm not going to go steal anything. But if it's a game, it's a game, it's a hundred percent a game. And, and Javier even said he had a plan and I think he, he disclosed his plan. He was just going to go down there and ask for them back. Would would y'all have given them back? Yeah. What would have happened? Well, let me tell you something first of all. Okay. So, and this is something that a lot of people aren't aware of. So my initial strategy was to go over take the sleeping bags from your former camp, right? So, and, so, and, and we missed each other and it, and it was nothing oh, against yeah. you personally no, or, or Don perfect, or Joel, yeah. but it's like, okay, you guys are obviously a team and mm-hmm. I want to take a resource away from you that was obviously given to you yeah. as we all were. Absolutely. Um, luckily, the timing was like epic, right? You had no idea that I wasn't I with him and there was three sleeping bags. Yeah. So you thought, yeah, I've got him. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I guess everybody kind of thinks why wouldn't Why not take a strong guy out? Yeah. If you could, absolutely from a no. team, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, weaken it just a little bit, absolutely. So, so, it, so, it, I, I don't mean to cut you off, and, and, and but did you target D, or they were just the first one you came to? So, it was the first one I came to. Okay, I was targeting Delta because I knew, relatively speaking, roughly where you all were. Yeah, I knew Charlie was further down. But when I was going through the woods and trying to figure out, I'm like, whoever it's, I come on first, <laughs> honestly, it's thick back there too. it, it, is. it, back it there. was, it was a, uh, it was, not, I wouldn't say a crap shoot, but it was more or less like whoever I could get eyes on first, yeah, so whoever right. I could get intel on. And I knew Delta was closer, yeah. right? And I could see the fire from you all's camp okay. further down the way. And honestly, I didn't want to travel that far yeah. because it's a ways out there. Yeah. yeah. Because here's was the initial plan. And a lot of people don't know this. My plan was to get the sleeping bags, stash them, which I did because there's a lot of people asking me questions about, and this is one of the questions that maybe we can get to, you know, how did you not get caught and what the camera person that was on you and how did they not get seen and this and that, and we'll cover that. But my initial plan was to take the sleeping bags, stash them, right? Yeah. To where no one can find them, get on my raft, go back home. Yeah. Have that negotiation power. I know where your sleeping bags are. Do you want them? Let us have one of one of your, you know, people who's the strongest link, who who's who's the weakest, who's, you know, having some kind of dialogue between. So essentially you're ahead hunting I'm as well. trying to p- set up a, another game strategy. It's gameplay. Yeah, it's it's gameplay, gameplay, but we never got to that, right? Yeah. So what happened was, obviously, I stashed the sleeping bags. One of the camera people from Delta saw me. And when I saw that person, it freaked me out. I thought it was one of Delta. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they don't show that. But, you know, a little behind the scenes stuff. We're not giving anything away. Netflix shouldn't be mad about that. But when I saw that, I'm like, okay, this person is going to follow me. Because I had a GoPro on my head. Yeah. And um, they're basically just going to follow me. Well, she tried. And I was gone. Because I was thinking, like, you know, this is like I'm running from the police. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm an outlaw now. I'm a villain. So Absolutely. I just, I, I crossed that, that bridge. But, um. Anyway, uh, I did stash the sleeping bags and um, I knew that I could hear Dawn close and I didn't really 
know if it was Don. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought it might have been Angie. I didn't know. I was so confused. I just was like, well, I need to hide these in case I do get found out where the sleeping bags don't know. Yeah. You're not getting them. And then when the the raft situation, when she when Don popped the inner tubes, Ooh, yeah, two look, things went through like, my mind. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I thought, well, that was dumb because you could have just jacked my raft and then it would have mm-hmm. been even. Yeah. There's a bartering chip right yeah. there. Yeah. But now, in my mind, it's a war. Yeah. You, you took, I took something of yours. I made the first, you know, I sh- shot the first bullet. Now you're firing back. Okay, now it's on. Yeah. And so now I'm thinking, well, I, forget it. You're not getting the sleeping bags now. I'm taking okay. them with me. Yeah. So so how close did she actually get to you? So really close. Oh, and yeah. Hats right. off to Dawn because she, I had eyes on her. Yeah. And here's the irony too, the whole thing. Before we went out to Alaska, I was training and I'd like to ask you all this question too. I was doing a lot of trainings leading up to this and I had been doing trainings. I've been doing survival classes and bushcrafting classes and seer training and doing classes in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, two weeks before I went to Alaska, I did a scout tracker. It was actually called scout tracker two uh, with a school called nature Alliance in Kentucky. And part of that is to um, hide yourself yeah. and set up a shelter and without giving that class completely away, uh, but it's a lot of stealth missions of trying not to be discovered, trying not to be found, but also trying to track other people. Yeah. Uh, and you have different um, uh, tasks to do and uh, a lot of recon. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. I, I've never been in the military, but I'm fascinated with a lot of like what special forces do and, and just like a lot of the tactical maneuvering. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so it's like to me, it's just like big kid or adult hide and go seek. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I had done some training right before that and we did, you know, uh, basically a big game of hide and go seek where you had ghillie suits and you're out there and you're just trying not to be discovered and you have guys that are really good. Nine times out of 10, they find you. Oh, yeah. You know, because they're former military guys that just, they know what to look for. So for me, when I was doing that whole operation, it was just, it was fun. I felt like I was training again, but it was real. And so to answer your question, uh, Don, I would say within 20, 25 yards, oh, no she was that yeah. close. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the biggest thing was I was concerned about is the camera person with having film in me. I told her, I said, don't get me busted. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because I know I won't get caught. Yeah. You know, but it's, you're going to, you know, alarm the people that are looking for me, yeah. Joel and, and Don. Uh, but luckily she just, I mean, she was so close, but I think if she just would have moved a little bit, she zigged instead of zagged and she went right past me and I just was watching her. And I mean, I covered myself up pretty good to her, oh, yeah. you know, I didn't move and I had some like logs over me to where it kind of redirected. If you looked at me, you're just going to look at the log and not look at my profile. Absolutely, yeah. But, um, and the, in the ghillie suit actually, it was just the netting that we've been working on. And that was kind of a last minute impromptu you know, like strategy, like, oh, this will work. And I can just, yeah. you know, put ferns and moss yeah. or whatever on me. And, and it, it worked. It wasn't the no, best, but for... It, it done its thing. Right? Yeah, 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 it worked. That would have been an interesting conversation had she... Oh, had she, I, I, That would have been fun to, to watch how that would have went yeah. down. I mean... So yeah. as soon as that happened, we were on like... Like super red alert. Oh, yeah. um, we were we were actually stashing, <laughs> we were stashing those emergency uh, sleeping bag things. We were putting them like in like the holes of the trees and stuff out yeah. there. We're like, well, if they at least get the sleeping bags, they won't get like everything. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll tell you how bad it was. Like, it, like, oh, dude. We would get out and look through. You know, we had the binoculars. Oh yeah. We looked down like. Do you see Justin? <laughs> oh, dude. No, we, Justin. We were all four camp, down there. Camp. We were all four down oh, there at the man. bank trying to go for muscles. And we we're like, oh, yeah, there's uh, Amber and Jill walking down the bank. And we're Where's, like, Justin? Where's Justin? And we're like, oh. so So <laughs> one of us would <laughs> sprint back, high alert, back huh? to camp, sure. dude. Like, we were... We were like on it. We're like, yeah. they just got to try one time. It's like, we're not going to, we're not going to initiate anything. But if anything ever happened to we us, were ready. we were like, I was prepared to drag a whole camp. Like, I didn't care yeah. if you were it, in the camp or not. Like, it was all going to go in the river. Yeah. It would have got really fun. Yeah. And, uh, but, um, but man, wow. Wow. The swim back across. Uh-huh. So it, 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 you took the same swim. Um, more or less. More I, or less. I think mine was a little bit shorter. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, for sure. uh, yeah. It, still, it's cold it's though. Cold. It's still cold. I, I couldn't even that little bit of, I did, I think it was like about 20 yards for me. So from 20 mm-hmm. yards, from one point oh. to one point walking across gravel mm-hmm. and then, um, going back and swimming back with something, mm-hmm. it, it, it took everything in me to do it. But, uh, this is before Paul actually came over to our camp and, uh, 
Delta let me come right into their right into their camp. They had a fire going. They warmed me up right there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that see, that, really that's cool. what's cool too about a lot of people don't realize it's like, you know, not everybody was out to get each other. I mean, no. you know, like I so on our side, game. yeah, on our yeah. side I, when the whole crab pot thing. Uh, when the girls they went and actually got the crab crab pots, which was a, a whole nother thing. Like oh, drama we were between so us. mad. We didn't even know. Yeah, and and, and when no they idea. got them, you know, I had a conversation with Javier mm-hmm. as the show, you know, displayed. But uh, and I wanted to be straightforward with him. Like, look, if I get there first and can set your crab pot, I will. And if we get crab, I'll share. We're on this side. Yeah. You know, screw the other side. Yeah, we're, you know? we're already <laughs> screw you guys. We're already split into two yeah. teams technically. Yeah, right there, yeah. And there's still separate, four of us the out river, there. The river yeah. sort of forces you to kind of help each other out absolutely there. yeah and, and rightfully so but also kind of like with one eye open because you never know absolutely. what kind of alliances are going to form bonds oh, or build or what would be broken we yeah. we learned we learned just from watching the show uh that dawn wanted to actually steal the crab pots from us yeah and yeah. uh yeah. i don't think i don't think a lot of people caught that because it's like two mm-hmm. seconds it's it's real quick and paul actually stood up for us and was like no if you're going to do that you're going to open a whole can of worms yeah, yeah. i remember that as like that's interesting because you know it, it was I mean, the same thought process it was a thought going process. on and that's all it was for us it happens so quick in the show that if you're not paying attention if anything pulls your attention away with that very second yeah you you miss a whole story and um and i'm not defending anything that i've done and i stand behind everything i've done and and i would do it again Mm -hmm. yeah um no paul you were actually sorry to interrupt you were you were super big about it because you came over on your own you bartered for one of the crab pots you took it back over there and when you left, you brought the crab pot back to Angie. They were technically Angie's crab pots. I mean, we we all, without a doubt, like Angie, they're yours. Whatever decision you make on them, we're sticking by it because you won them. I mean, we're like, yeah, we won them as a team, but you you sacrificed. Basically, you could have sacrificed yourself yeah. to go get those. It, and and yeah. here was the barter. You know, the barter wasn't for a crab pot. Yeah. The barter I made was we would sit and pull a crab pot for because we we had a great raft. I mean, it, it, you oh, see, yeah, it was stout. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, was, it was it was huge. It was big. You see, you were doing. I lifted on. it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So the barter was not for the crab pot, but what to set and pull. We would get one third. Yeah, you know, and and like like you mentioned earlier, Don said, I don't want to do it. You know, and and can we steal it as I'm on the board? And I'm like, no, you don't want. That's a kind of shit you don't want to deal with. Yeah. we don't want to start that game. And so when I went and made a barter, uh, and she said, do you have rope? They're like, yeah. And she said, well, take this crab pot and get familiar with it. So it was my job to set her crab pot. It wasn't mm-hmm. ours. So when the deci- decision was made to change camps, you know, that wasn't Delta's crab pot. Right. That wasn't right. my crab pot. Right, it, yeah. was, it was a barter that I had made with Angie. Mm-hmm. So that needed to be returned. Yeah. And, and I just felt like, you know, for me, that was, you know, whether they, people like it or they hate it, that was an easy decision for me. Yeah, that was yeah. that was my barter with another person, and that was hers. She said, hey, take this, get familiar with it. She didn't give that to me. Yeah. She loaned that to me. I would me. have done the same thing. Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're, and you're playing by a, a rule set that's like, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah I, I, literally, I could have taken, I'd made fishing rods or fishing poles. I didn't take that. I'd made a dip net. I didn't take that. Um, I did take a hand reel. There was three of those there. Yeah. You know, so they had still two had two hand reels. So I took one of those. I felt that was fair enough. Um, I took my 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 belongings after that. Absolutely, so, you could have taken the extra sleeping bag, honestly. Yeah, and, and, and that's why you still had yeah, three Jordan yeah, sleeping yeah, bag was yeah, still there, but right. I only took mine. The, yeah. And the sleeping bag things, I, you, guys. So if you look at those sleeping bags, they're rated. They were horrible. They're rated for twenty degrees. Yeah, and at night, I saw the price point on one. They actually left the tag on it, and I was like, "This isn't even a good bag." <laughs> no, it was horrible. So and at night, it would get down to way below twenty, so it was just enough that your teeth would still be chattering. You know what yeah. made them better? Having two of them. Having two of them. <laughs> when you, Doubling when you, them up. When, when um, I think Javier brought the extra ones yeah, over and we yeah. were able to double them up, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I slept naked. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. After yeah. that, I was like, I'm, I'm getting out of my dirty clothes. Yes. I'm sleeping naked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and Same was, here. And I, I, I had to. Yeah. yeah. I would drop down to my, just my skivvies and Nothing. I'd be, That's man, I, I, had I was... Yeah. way more comfortable it was almost like all right i'm a little warm now yeah. you know kind of like this like is comfortable my toes that. never really got quite there but no. yeah. um did you ever put like rocks in the oh, fire yeah, absolutely. okay absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what one thing a lot so, of people don't know that no like yeah a, that's kind of a survival type well, if you're thing. if you're out like what we did on the uh at we had nalgene bottles so we carried a little bit of a heavier bottle mm-hmm. and um you put boiling water in that and then you oh. bring that in there with you Ooh. yeah so you, it, it, you don't have that rock or anything but mm-hmm. you have like a nice hot bottle of water with you and that's a great thing to warm up your like yeah. toe box sure so yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've seen boris 
Oh yeah, our stove. We didn't yeah. Need oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So we, we would we would have our rocks on there at night. And Everybody had our own there. favorite rock. Your Everybody had their oh, own yeah, rock. rock. It was your rock. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, like Wilson. Or, or <laughs> oh yeah, you get attached to the weirdest things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Seth have a habit. That's a thing. Up. Yeah, yeah. He, your heart rocks. Dude. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, I'm so mad about that. So um, I didn't get to bring them back. But uh, something I do from every adventure I go on is I bring I bring my wife back uh, a heart shaped rock if I can find one, and I mm-hmm. had a whole mess of them. Yeah. Oh, and wow, uh, yeah. I didn't I didn't get to bring any of them back. So that really that sucks. But. Is what it is. We'll go back up there. We'll, I'll find her another heart shape rock. Sure, yeah. absolutely. And so, so to reel us back in, you know, we're 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 discussing the sleeping bag thing because it's a big deal. Yeah. Like a lot of people lose yeah. their mind over that, but again, yeah. it's, it's 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 a game show and it yeah. is in play. Yes. So, um, it's is it popular? No. Was it ingenious? Yes. <laughs> yes. Did we chose not to do that because that never ends? You know, you just made a statement that it was war now. Yeah, mm-hmm. you had taken that. She had busted this. What can I do to her next? We we didn't want to get into that. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, so but what we what we would do, <laughs> I don't right or wrong, we would sit back and flame the, like, oh yeah, watch this go down. So we yeah. were like, I mean, yeah, I was I mean, like watching it go yeah. down. Everything with the without the popcorn. Yeah, no popcorn it, for it, so. while yeah. we were watching our backs at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Um, when I had met Jill on a deer hunting trip. She was had mentioned that she was nervous because she thought I was still part of Delta, and she's mm. like, "I did not know how this was going to go down because of the sleeping bag thing." And I just took your sleeping bag. She said she just took it. Yeah, and I'm like, "I've been gone." She didn't know. And and, and mm-hmm. our deal was basically um, that whatever happened for Delta and Bravo because they were they were both suffering, right? Mm-hmm. Let's get these two teams together, and then whatever happens happens. But our deal was that. If they implode or if you have members starting to flare out, we weren't going to accept any other member. Right. And I, I, it kind of portrays like we had some devious plans set up, but we had no idea what was going on mm-hmm. until it was going on. And right. you, you seen it going down across the river. Um, but sort of after that, I mean, we, we kept to our, we're going to play a straight game, yeah. but there was no other plans outside of, we're not accepting any, any, and, any of those two teams. And it, it was pretty much clear to us at this point, like, um, everybody had it in their head, like, oh, you could pretty much only win with a team of four. Yeah. It, and, and we had a team of four, Javier came over to us and we're like, you know what? We're not even going to introduce that to us. Cause if we all cross the finish line or whatever it was at the same time and there's five of us now we have to vote somebody off yeah, yeah you know and that's not right and, and so and we were protecting our four yes so you know you, you can only win with a team of four and the whole deal had went down with javier mm-hmm. brian's gone yeah uh he'd burn his camp down yeah um you know and he came over and he was pretty adamant about hey just just let me stay to get revenge on them and i will flare at listen man yeah there's a million dollars up for stake and you're getting a piece of that. And there's four of us. You can only win with four. I, I'm not going to take a chance of fracturing my family or hurting my family. If you decide that you're not going to flare out and there's some other competition right. that could put Absolutely, one of my teammates yeah. out. And, and this was us as a whole. This wasn't yeah. my decision. It wasn't Seth's decision. No, it's this democracy. hundred percent democracy. 100%. And you saw that yeah. when you came yeah. over. Yeah. And I love that yeah. because it, that is a, a, a strong unit. And, and unfortunately it, it, didn't work in your favor at that particular time. And, and there's a lot of mixed feelings a hundred percent about that. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There's a lot of pushback on that too. And, yeah. and people are asking me about that too. And maybe we can cover that and, yeah. uh, and, and we'll go over that. But, um, wh- what I wanted to know too is, um, you know, from the show, uh, and the way Javier's approach and, and like Javier is a very unique individual, um, whether you love the guy or hate the guy. And there's a lot of people that do like him cause they felt like he kind of got, um, you know, uh, cheated a little bit just yeah. because of the, by happenstance and the way that things unfolded. In my opinion, the way he approached you all was completely wrong about how he wanted to seek revenge. Yeah. And he wanted to, and I, just from like, kind of like putting myself in you all's shoes, right? While I was still over there, I would think from just a, you know, like outside the box looking in, if someone was wanting to come to my team so they could be seek vengeance, that's going to disrupt the flow within our team. Yeah. And yeah. and if it's not there, right, yeah. then why invite that into your team? Absolutely. We, we Aside from, you know, making four or five splitting, you know, like all so that. So you read it perfectly. We anticipated it. Um, one of the things that was going on in the back of my head, too, was uh, he had a team 
and they seemed like a pretty strong team in the beginning. Uh, we didn't know we didn't know two of their guys left and everything like that very early on. Obviously, mm -hmm. we found out we found out probably like five or six days in mm -hmm. that that they were down two guys. Wow. And uh, but to see somebody's team diminish like that, like two guys leave right off the bat, like yeah. and then from our understanding, Brian left because he left and all that morals and everything. Yeah. So we're like. Is there is there in our head is there an underlying factor going on there like is 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 this guy a hundred percent like is he is he stable like yeah. is he is he good for us is he yeah. a good fit for the well, team you're reading between the lines man you're yeah. seeing like okay <laughs> yeah. well, you know everything else that has unfolded like why are these girls attacking you why did your team Absolutely. leave why is Brian not here and you're the last one standing <clears throat> yeah and we're seeing that from an outside perspective. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. We have no, we literally have almost no contact with that side of the river at this point, like mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and there's some mention that, that Jill and I had had a conversation with Brian and we edged him into quitting. And, and that's not the case. You know, we, I, I, I did speak with Brian during a hunting trip and uh, Brian seemed to be, you know, very unhappy, which none of us were like super happy. Right. I mean, we we're all kind of miserable, but I think he had had enough, and if mm -hmm. you and if you had heard or read Brian's note, man, it it touched home. You know, he didn't want any part of, of any of this stuff that was going on, yeah. and he and he decided to separate himself from it. it wasn't nothing that I done or nothing that Jill done or nothing that it was just as a whole. Yeah. He, Brian's a great guy, yeah, you yeah, know. He and, and he said, "Okay, I've reached my moral limits. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, and and so and which it, is and, fair. I mean, as as yeah. a man, you have you have a limit." To what you're okay and with, and he reached that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's very noble. Respect Absolutely, him for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, the thing that really, you know, and then of course there's some things out that said that uh, you know, Paul made a decision not to take Javier into you know to Charlie camp. Paul doesn't make any decisions. Mm -hmm. This is a democracy. Yeah. yeah. It is 100. percent We listened to what he had to say. We went back as a group. We discussed it, and, and we chose not to. And, and there's a, there's a reasons that we already mentioned, but some of the things that kind of stuck out to us is one just let me come back and get revenge and i'll flare out yeah to me that's in, in, there's no warm us, fuzzies there no you're bringing drama into our camp yeah. and we're not playing that game mm -hmm. second is i will hunt my own food i will build my own bed and i'm like dude we don't work like yeah, that we're here yeah. we are we, it's all, we we work as a you know a, a cohesive unit here all yeah. together yeah and we felt that there was some some separate he was already separating himself before he even came on and, yeah. and, and that was our feeling as a group absolutely and and I, we made the best decision for our team at that as time we saw, as we saw personal. at that point yeah that's right for gameplay for our unit that was the best decision for us absolutely. yeah and it makes sense you know for from our side of the river we had no idea what those conversations were looking like until we watched the show yeah. so we waited 16 months you know to see the outcome of <laughs> your conversation yeah. with Javier right yeah and right off the bat, I could just tell like, oh, well, it totally makes sense yeah. why you would be making the decision that you did because, you know, um, he should have done a better job of selling himself and not like attached to whatever outcome was it was going to be. And so I feel like, yeah, you know, like to your point, you know, like he just, you recognize it right off the bat. Okay. And so if it were me in his shoes, I would be like, hey, this is the situation. I'm not going to get into all the details and all the drama here's the facts. Yeah. I would love to be a part of your team. Just kind of like we had that conversation Absolutely. when that time came Absolutely. because it was like, okay, you want some hard truth? Here it is, yeah. man. And yeah. lay it all out. Yeah. And no drama. This yeah. is, this is what's going on, you know? Yeah. And, and we had that in the back. You, you were talking about a little bit about how Jill was playing us a little bit. And we, we always had that in the back of our, our, our brains. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. Cause we were working on it for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. And, and I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So, well, there was talk on our camp too, and it was divisive trying to play the game, yeah, trying yeah. To, like how it could be set up to where we can take one of you all out and all yeah. this. And I didn't really know how I felt about it. I was just like, okay, whatever we can do to get the, you know, the game moving forward. Yeah. And, and at then, that point it's like, okay, what, what's the next strategy? Yeah. Then, I think, and, and it was some comments made later kind of support that. I don't feel it, and I don't feel either way about it. it it's fine. Um, by nature, from Eastern Kentucky, like I, I'll give you a shot off my back. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, we had a few conversations during the hunting trip, and she was like, "Man, you're, you know, you're a super nice guy. I bet people take advantage of you a lot, right?" And I'm like, "I usually get it when they do." And <laughs> and, and she made a statement later that, "Hey, we we thought you'd be easy to separate." And I th I think 
I, I don't know. I think just kindness was kind of mistaken for weakness, and, and yeah. like mm-hmm. an, I was an easy person to separate. And, yeah. she, and they thought she thought, or maybe you guys thought that mm-hmm. you could draw me over mm-hmm. and isolate me, and then that'd be the end of it. Yeah. Um, and, and we had taken into consideration, yeah. and we already had a plan for that. Um, so we're like, hey, let's meet, let's meet, let's talk. If f- again, from we didn't know anything about it, it, from originally. She, Hunter gatherer, East, or from Kentucky, mm-hmm. strong team player. Yeah, she, yeah. She, she knew how to forge. Like we found out that y'all had mushrooms over there. We didn't have any no, mushrooms over there. Really? I found I found one way past its prime chicken of the woods. Okay, and that wow. was it. Other yeah. than that, and like it was so so far gone. Like yeah. it, it was buggy. Yeah. You didn't want to eat it. You don't this. know. No, yeah. it's not and, edible. And there was nothing else on our side. So he came back. Uh, and what they don't show. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it like you came back with a pocket full of mushrooms that, that you and Jill found. That's, Jill educated me on those. And I, I, I she knows little, her stuff, man. I, I was mean, a little fish. I'm like, she's giving her. me some mushrooms. Let me check them out. No, and like, yeah. I saw them and they're, I'm like, all of these check out. These are all edible mushrooms. Yeah. I she, learned a lot from her on the show oh, no, when it comes yeah, to I'm not saying she's, foraging. I'm not saying she's not she's a formal opponent. And, and don't take that the wrong way. I think, I think anybody on our team could go one-on-one head up against her. But she's she's really knowledgeable in what she's doing out yeah, there, yeah. as far as at least foraging goes. Um, we saw that she got a squirrel and everything like that. Like, okay, that's fine. But the we, squirrels we, are small, it, it, and I was shooting mm-hmm. squirrels too. Yeah, they don't show it, but I think yeah. they killed squirrels and a few yeah. other things out there. That yeah. uh, so it was happening. Yeah, and, uh, and you and you came really close on a deer too, which they didn't show yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean it was super close. without giving too much away behind <laughs> the scenes. But this is some of the behind the scenes stuff that you know you don't get to see, and that's yeah. why we're having this podcast to kind of like get into the nitty gritty of of what this show really. Yeah. was all about and yeah. we're not trying to demonize anybody no, either not, like no. jill jill went out there she played the best game that she thought she could play mm-hmm. and and there's nothing wrong with that it was all in the back of all of our head like yeah we could we could play a little dirty there's nothing yeah. wrong with it you know what i'm saying like <laughs> we thought about it we're like yeah. we're like we can go over there yeah. we have we have the the manpower we have the muscle right now we could go and drag everybody into that river right now yeah. if we really wanted to i mean sure. if you want to make it nasty you know to where we could right? absolutely but uh, we're like we don't want to play that game yeah. we're, and we're, we're actually i think it's a, a a testament to Jill that we that we said, hey, she's she's a strong player, and, and I think that you know, and of course, he, Seth and the guys had already tried to get you, and you were like, mm, we'll see. So so now that's kind of a door closed. Let's go to the next door, and we felt not take anything away from Amber, no. but we felt Jill was the next strongest player, sure. and and, yeah. and again, Jill fits that. The demographic, like we're all from like a pretty much the tri-state yeah. area, mm-hmm. we, you know, we all have at least some kind of bond. We, we're in the Appalachian region. We. It, yeah, and I, and I mentioned it before. Like, I think I got to see a side of Jill that not many people got to see, and I got to see we we have a connection because we're from basically the same background, the same type of area. Mm-hmm. And I again, like, I got to see that part that nobody gets to see of Jill. Yeah, yeah. Did I feel not many people gets to see? And and she was. I, I enjoyed my time with her. And if she could have came to to our side, and I understand her bond with Amber, and you know, if that's the reason she didn't leave, that's very respectable. Um, but we just felt, gosh, if we could get her on the team too, we will fracture that team, and then mm-hmm. our team would be. I mean, it's Absolutely. so much stronger. And it and it wasn't to say that she was any better than you or better than Amber, but she was a very strong member of the team. In but and we had contact with her as well. It, that's right. And, and in the back of our head, though, we we said, and she could be playing us. Yeah. yeah. So that's possible. So let's play this out. Let's see how this goes. Let's all talk to her. There was nothing set in stone. We we knew that there was a possible play in there against us so we weren't we weren't all ready to just take her in and let what happens yeah. happen so you guys yeah. were keen to the idea of that it was it could be a little oh like, absolutely I mean, you I mean i mean i never thought you guys were naive I, yeah. and i and i tried to even say that occasionally like look in this game in any type of strategic strategic maneuver you're going to make especially absolutely. if you want to try to go into another camp you know they're going to be eyebrows up oh, yeah. and watching with one eye open at all times and, and and honestly like you know not to jump too far ahead but when I came over I knew you guys would be looking at me that way right I I totally yeah. knew that and I'm like I have nothing there's no nothing for me to gain by trying to sabotage you guys, and I think I yeah. hope that you felt my authenticity. Oh, no. We we because I you right I was you. pretty like you I'm had at a my bad wits end. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. we we, we, we wanted happy. you. We were we yeah. were so ecstatic at that point. Yeah. We could see fractures. What what we felt was fractures across the river. Oh, we yeah. could see we were knew that they were a little a worried lot. at that point. Like yeah. four at, at that point, it would have been four on two. It would have been back up to four on two. Yeah, and um, 
it sucks that it, it, it went down how it did. Um, I, I wasn't happy about the decision personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's move democracy. forward on that. Yeah. Like, uh, so, you know, after everything had happened and, and, you know, obviously you had the conversation with Jill yeah. that didn't go as planned. She had basically felt like you are trying to manipulate her. She was like, no, you're not going to treat me like a submissive little bitch. Yeah. And rightfully so in her mind, maybe that's what she felt like. And that's what she wanted to display. Like you're not going to move her like a pawn. Right. And then that wasn't really what <clears throat> I got from it. Yeah. But that goes to show you a strong minded woman. Yeah. You're not going to push him around, even if you're not trying to. The only I, I, I said, I said what was said. And um, all I said was it has to be today, Jill. Like, yeah. because at this point she dragged us on for a, week, for a week, or so, a week yeah. and a half, almost two weeks. Uh-huh. And, and we got tired of like, Oh, I'll give you an answer tomorrow. I'll give you an yeah. answer tomorrow. And it's like, we need to know by today, Jill. Yeah. And like, it wasn't even in a pushy way or anything. I, I'm not a, I don't think I'm a super pushy person. Like that's it. Yeah. And I know then, she felt like as if, you all gave her an ultimatum. I mean, yeah. which drove her over the edge. But it's not. It, I mean, we just wanted to know. You mm-hmm. can't. You can't I, leave I guess somebody we, on anymore. I guess we sort of. Not it's an ultimatum, but it's, like, yeah, but it's, it's not it's like now a, or never. Yeah, it's yeah, like so making a it decision. Was. It's black or white. It's no yeah, gray. so it's either you want to come with us, and it, it's a hard decision. What, yeah, yeah. It, it well, is she a hard was decision. conflicted. Yeah, and rightfully I, I so. See that. Yeah. You know, and and I mean, you know, her loyalty was tested, and she got defensive. And, you know, got emotional and that's the things that happen when you're in these situations, oh, yeah. when you are lacking in sleep and nutrition and yeah. food your, your and, brain's you know, not working yeah, at a hundred percent. Like my brain wasn't working at a hundred percent. So yeah. your, your, your decision making at this point, we're, we're 30, we're 30 some days in, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like you're, you're hungry. Yeah. We have fish and stuff, but you're, you're not making the best decisions that you can a hundred percent of the time. You, yeah. You know, if, if you, if, if, if I look at it from Jill's standpoint, you know, there's obviously a bond that she's created with Amber yeah. and there's something you go through and, and I hope I don't get killed for this, but less than 40 days out there, but we're going through some pretty traumatic stuff and yeah. our, it, we chose to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, it was all volunteer based. No way. Yeah. There's no yeah. gun to anybody's head saying like, Hey, you we signed up here. for it. Absolutely. We People quit day one. Basic basic contract. Contract. Like, yeah. That's fine. You can quit whenever you want. It's not, but mm-hmm. mandatory. But you bond through that. Absolutely. You, you, you bond through that suck, right? And, yeah. and so um, I don't know the whole dynamics of what was going on in camp, only what I was able to see on the show. But we, we do know that she, she'd she forged a bond with Amber, and, and, yeah. and a special bond, much like we all share on, oh, on, on our team. So we're asking this girl to not only betray her friend, but to take a chance to come over and we could hang her out to dry. We mm-hmm. could, yeah. How mm-hmm. could you? What? And, and tell me now. You, you now or nothing now yeah. or nothing and now I'm like your back's against the wall yeah I could see where you could break down there and be like oh, you absolutely. know what I'm safe here you guys can just kick rocks but it I'm wasn't done. it was and from where we were coming from that's not we, we yeah, had no yeah. Ill, we really we legitimately wanted her over we wanted yeah. a full team over and we didn't pressure you harder anymore because mm-hmm. like I I already gave that olive branch I extended yeah. that olive branch yep. already and mm-hmm. I, I didn't I didn't think less of you for it or anything. It's just like I'm not going to pursue somebody who doesn't want to come over. Yeah, you but know sure. What I'm yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, why would you? Yeah, absolutely. And and we didn't we didn't really reach out to Amber because we never got her one on one or anything like that. We didn't want to we didn't want to reach out in front of the whole camp. Yeah. Because now it's like oh you got to act loyal to your camp. In front. It's like we're just trying to get an honest answer out of you if you're willing to come or not. Cause I know any, anyone on our team, if you came over, it's like, Hey, come join our team. We're going to be like, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you guys not. had such a strong, thick unit. Bond, like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Your, your glue yeah. was already set. And yeah. Still, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I think towards the end, you can kind of recognize that. And, absolutely. uh, you know, so like moving forward with, with after that had happened. Yeah. And then I knew when, Alpha camp was kind of just dissolving. It was, we were falling apart and, you know, I was being accused of things and things were unfolding and things were happening. And I was, I was getting sick. I was not in a good spot. I mean, talk about Jordan seeing black spots. There were days where I would have some moments chopping wood and I would like get lightheaded and I would kind of like, okay. But at the same time, I was actually trying to hide from, you know, (laughs) production to not see that or any safety to recognize like, okay, you know, because with, with, Going out and uh, on, a, um, you know, from a healthy uh, or due to a medical, man, that would have broke my heart. So oh, I was dear. trying to hang on for yeah. as long as I could because I knew, I mean, we all were suffering uh, and it was really affecting me. And plus, you know, with e- being able to catch the fish that we did. Mm. And then I was the last one to smoke my fish. Mm. And what happened is, is I actually ate some of my fish that wasn't cooked all the way or smoked all the way. Okay. So then I started having 
issues. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like digestive issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, so like Angie, she went out because she ate too much and she was impacted and, Absolutely. and, and that is a real thing. People don't understand. Yeah. Like you, you don't eat for a long time. And if you are eating just a little bit of, you know, some limpets and some muscles and it's, it's not enough to sustain you. It's like having a salad if that, yeah. and then, um, you go from eating this rich, uh, salmon that's oily and then if your gut doesn't agree with that, I mean, to yeah. this day, I still can't eat salmon. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, I tried I in Costa Rica, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I know. Right. It's like it, 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 part of it's mental, but yeah. I tried it. I tried it in Costa Rica after a year after being on the show. Nope. Doesn't agree with me. Mm. So whatever, like my body, it just rejects that. So yeah. I was on my way out yeah. just holding on. Uh, you know, did I steal their fish? No. To anybody that wants to know, no, I didn't steal anything from them. But, and then to be accused of that, it's like, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Right. And you're like, no, I don't want, you can have my fish. Yeah, it's supposed ready. to be your family yeah. out there and they're, they're yeah. accusing and, and, you. And you see it like falling apart. What options do you have? Yeah. yeah. I know that I'm not going to pull that flare. And in the beginning of the show, it's like, you know, we opened up like, yeah, you guys can have this back. Cause yeah. I'm not pulling that. I I'm not going to shoot. Yeah. I'm not going to quit. I wouldn't even touch it. Like, um, yeah. Like uh, we we had to fire ours for Angie and then um, all that. I'm I'm like I'm not touching that thing. Yeah, it's almost like yeah. a uh, what do you call that? Where you're um, I'm superstitious. You know, like almost. the salt over the shoulder. Yeah, where you're, superstitious. Uh, superstitious. Yeah. yeah. So it's like me. I'm, same thing. I mean, I'm not superstitious, but I'm like get that thing out of mm-hmm. here. None of none of us are gonna pull that flare out. It's just it's my mind's done. I yeah, my out here's quitting's not my yeah. First I chucked it. It was yeah. gone. Yeah. No idea it's yeah. Gone. That way it's it's just not an option. Um, but you know, so as far as, um, moving forward and, and when we had that conversation across the river, uh, you know, I, I knew at a point and, and, and God bless the girls cause they were trying to hold on to the best that they could. And for whatever reason that they didn't want to trust me, it, it was probably a lot of things that just didn't go the way that they had planned. Cause yeah. Jill, she's a thinker and, and have to give her credit, you know, whether you like her or you, or you don't. She's smart and she knows yeah. her stuff yeah. and she, you have to recognize that, right? Whether her gameplay or her tactics or her, her personality, if you don't like that, that's one thing, yeah. but her, her ability to do the things she did. I mean, she was out there yeah. for the duration. Um, so I learned a lot from her, but I think when you have a person that has a personality as strong as hers and a will that is strong as hers um, and people that probably relive some childhood traumas because you're out there suffering and it's probably bringing back times that you've suffered. Yeah. It's going to cause your mind to just almost play tricks on you. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think we can all attest I got, that. I got super paranoid out there cause I'm, I'm, I, I think over everything and my wife will attest to this. Like I just sit there and I think, and I think, and I think, and it'll keep me up at night. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm almost paranoid out there. Like what's the next move? Like what's yeah. going on? Like it, it can be paralyzing. Happen? And I think, yeah, I think sure. it got to her a lot faster than it would have got to me, mm-hmm. you know, cause you got to think like you're, you're competing 24 seven. There's no off switch. There, there's no off no switch. Off switch. Yeah. You're like laying there in bed, like thinking of like, what can I do to get an upper hand? What we would have those conversations. Jill and I would stay up till, you know, yeah. cause it was hard for me to fall asleep sometimes. Cause yeah. the sun goes down six o'clock. What do you yeah. do? Yeah. You know, you just go to bed, you talk about food and then all the oh, stuff yeah. you're going to eat. Mean, right. Yeah. And, yeah. and whatever else, you know, I know with, with Nick, he would tell stories and, oh, yeah. and oh, so you, you just do what you can do to fill the time. And I mean, I would ask Jill about, you know, yeah, tell me that recipe that you have, you know, with, uh, you know, with the dirt cake and how you'd make that. And so I'd have, she almost every night yeah. and they just relive that to kind of like get into that mindset of like taking you away from the suffering. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, having those conversations, but, um, you know, when, when we had our conversation across the river and I knew that this is going to be my last move, yeah. like this is me moving my last chess piece and thankfully you and Nick and you weren't at the time because you were on, you weren't there, but you were on the hunt mm-hmm. and having that conversation. Cause I really wanted all three of you there because yeah. I wanted to be like, Hey, here's, here's the truth. Here's the beans. I'm spilling them. Yeah. And, uh, it was great because you guys were like, yeah, you want to come over Charlie? I'm like, oh, dude, we were so happy yeah, you're reading my mind, you man. You have no <laughs> idea how over the moon we were yeah. as a team. Like Paul came back yeah. and he's like, yeah. Fuck yes. Yeah. You know, well, that's good. We we could see there was separation between you guys. You were spending more and more time away from you know, they were mm-hmm. they were in their group and then you were separate. I'm like, man, maybe. And yeah. would, it, but we were so elated elated that, you know, like, oh my God, he said yes, this is gonna be great. Um 
so anyways, we, when you made that decision to come and, and, and we were just so happy. Yeah. And then you made, so I, I don't know how much that trip took out of you because it was a long walk around and you know how much energy mm-hmm. you had to begin with. And then the night that you were in camp, it just felt, it felt right. Natural. Yeah. And the first time like, this is a lot. Well, you guys accepted me with open arms, man. And I thought, well, if we make man, that decision, we already, we already, we, like, this we went through every scenario. Like, yeah. yeah. We went through every scenario. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, so on that note, like, obviously you kind of knew something was up, yeah. right? And you knew that Alpha Team was kind of dwindling. They're losing me. Uh, I'm coming over. What was your thoughts about me? Like, knowing that I was kind of the villain, I stole the sleeping bags. I obviously have some, you know, maybe there's a lack of a little credibility with me being kind of the villain. Where Did you, I mean, obviously you guys accepted me and you were excited, but were you, any part of you, and I'll ask you, Paul, because you understand what it's like to leave a team. You understand it's not a good fit for you. Yeah. And you're paying the you're playing the game. You're yeah. you're you're using strategy. You're going to a stronger team, right? Everyone goes to Charlie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which obviously is the reason for that. Yeah. Um, but um, even with me coming over, and and I want you to answer this, but I know like even when I was coming across the river and you you, you told me, look at you man to man, face to face, no funny business. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> no, this is your authentic Justin. I have nothing to offer okay. you other than my strengths. I'm not trying to pull any shit. So, you know, on that note, like, obviously you could kind of relate to my situation in my reasoning, but in the back of your mind, did you ever think, should we keep an eye on this guy or is he, is he trustworthy so or in the back of my head? Can I, can I, yeah, interject yeah, yeah, for sure. in the back of my head and I, I'm not trying to brag on myself at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just happens to be nature. Um, I hold body fat on a small frame and it works. i I like to think I'm like one of the stronger ones out there just because the genetics. Sure. Like I hold, I hold the body fat. It was my power out there. And yeah. I think Paul, even if Nick was here, I had, I had more left to give. Yeah. And, um, I knew you could make that swim again. So mm-hmm. if you did do anything, there's nowhere you're going to go. Right. So it's like, now you have three guys over here. Mm-hmm. To buy your, like we, we weren't worried about it. We, okay. we ran through those scenarios and we're like, he's not going to do anything. Like yeah. he, and we saw, we I was hoping of, you didn't think I was that dumb. No, like no, 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 no. We <laughs> saw, we saw the tension. Like you may say you're team. too dumb to die. <laughs> I'm too dumb to like make a decision about something like that. Would, we, yeah. yeah. No, we ran every scenario. No, we ran we everything and we're like, this is, this is a hundred percent serious right. about it. Nothing. And, yeah. and we saw the tensions over there. Yeah. Like, like we picked up on the cues. We, like if we you're separating yourself from those two more and more, we're like, he probably doesn't want to be over there anymore. And then you came up to us and you talked to us, man, mm-hmm. like man to us, like mm-hmm. Nick and I. Yeah. And we're like, dude, this is this is him wanting to get away from that. And we don't we don't blame you. Yeah. And and we we were ecstatic. Now that means we're back up to four strong. Yeah. Like it's a numbers game. It really is a numbers yeah. game. Whether you see it as a weakness or not. Even if it's a race, now all four people have to cross a finish line. That's fine. We got three guys to carry one. Yeah, we and, have two to carry two. You know and, what I'm saying? Like, and you all were playing the game, and and even though it might have been just by happenstance, you know, where Paul came over. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Angie left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it, it had you all at three, and not that that's a disadvantage, but the, yeah. it was evened up towards the end. Alpha versus Charlie. Yeah. Three versus three. Yeah. And you know, honestly you guys are just moving your chess pieces a little bit more strategically than the other teams. Yeah. And you may not have been eager to jump the gun like we did to cause, you know, to kind of force people's hands in movements that cause drama and emotional responses. But at the same time, you know, if, if I had to do it all over again, I would have done it, yeah. but I would have done it better. Yeah. And more ruthless because people ask me that. Oh, would you still see bags again? Hell yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, okay. of course I would. You know, and hopefully I'd have someone strong with me doing it. But obviously, being a little bit more tactical. Yeah. Um, however, if I didn't have to, and I could play the game that was being played, and I could watch, you know, things crumble around me. Well, why not just watch and see, like, okay, where can I pull and where could I move? And you know, you're playing chess, yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. It, absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And and we're 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 going to address this elephant in the room about why did you not finish with us? We're going to get to that. Okay. Yeah. But you, you know, you you bringing that up, how you know we were able to sit back and watch the game evolve and make our moves a little bit slower. When you came in to to Charlie Camp and you seen 
it, I don't know what was going on across the river and, and what their perception was of how we were surviving. But when you seen two racks of salmon and and trout, we had a yeah, month and a half shelter. A yeah, wood stove. we had a month and a half of trout. We had mm. a week's worth of wood already cut. We had yeah. a stove at a big shelter. So when you seen that, first off, what did you think? And when you're like comparing what you're seeing in Charlie Kent to what you just left in Alpha, where did we sit? If it came down to, in your opinion, if it came down to just outlasting, if we're not racing to a finish now, Mm -hmm. if we're literally outlasting as non-biased as you can be, Mm -hmm. how would that would play out? You think from a non-biased point of view, from a resources standpoint and seeing what you all had in the shelter and the strength just with three men, right? And I'm not being sexist here, yeah. right? Because those women are strong mentally. Are no, no doubt about Physically, it. Physically, they were dwindling, as we all were, Yeah, uh, not taking anything away from them because they were strong. I have, I have to say what I said when I was leaving. I've seen both sides of this. And I know who's going to win. Yeah. yeah. And so it wasn't because I favored you guys with that. It was, I mean, I did in a way, but f- from the resource standpoint, from a hunter standpoint, from gatherer, uh, like when I first got there to Charlie, first thing Nick did, he's like, here, he, sh- he shoved a can of uh, mussels in front of my face with some soup. And I'm like, oh. You know, I felt like he was like my grandma trying to feed me cookies when I first come, soup. right? <laughs> yeah, all, and he, he always said food is. He's trying to give it to me every day, and I'm like, I can't. Yeah, eat Yeah, honestly, it was a godsend because it's like, man, I, you know, like, okay, he's taking care of me, and you, you offered me your boots, you know, because my shit was wet, yeah. and um, let me sit right by the fire. You guys were just so accommodating, and uh, didn't really have that at Alpha. So at that point, from that movement moment forward. I, I just, it was like a overwhelming feeling like, man, I'm with the winning team here, baby. This, yeah. this is it. Well, this is it. No matter what happens now, because I know my limits, but I know I can push myself beyond yeah. what I know I'm capable of. Um, and when I had to leave, like I said, you know, like I've seen both sides. I, I know who's going to win. And, and truthfully, like I didn't know, but in my mind, I knew because just from a resource standpoint and what, how what you guys had done and built up with like with as much firewood as you had. I mean, you had stacks and stacks and stacks. We had to cut firewood daily to -hmm. cut what we'd go through or to, to burn what we'd go through. So we didn't have the strength in numbers like you all did. Um, when it comes to like, accumulated resources but did y'all did y'all split that chore firewood because firewood was hard yeah yes and no i mean for the majority of it, and i think the girls would attest to this like i i cut a lot of firewood mm. now they did pull their weight they would cut trees down and they would cut firewood but for the most part um i tried to do most of that just to let them be you know like hey look let me be the muscle all right let me cut the firewood let me get it cut in smalls and get kindling ready and they would go out and forge and they would, you know, they, they would get the, uh, the clams and the limpets where I didn't have to do a lot of that, yeah. which yeah. was kind of nice. That's but at nice, the same yeah. time, like they, that, that was their role and they did it good and, and they bonded while doing that. Yeah. Uh, and while they do forging and all that, but, um, you know, they, they definitely, uh, Amber, she's a little trooper. Like I have to give credit to her cause I mean, she, she would get in there and just do the damn thing. She's like, yeah. I'm cutting this fire. Right? I'm, <laughs> I'm tough, cutting dude. it. And Jill would too. And she yeah. was, you know, uh, really helping Amber with making the fire a lot of the times. And, they, and the girls made the fire most most every night yeah, and because yeah. that was what they wanted to do. So I wasn't going to try to, like, push my agenda because I can make fire. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Th- they're good at that. Amber became better at fire building yeah, good. because she's from Arizona. And mm-hmm. out there, you yeah. can't really make fires because of the, you know, the, the fire hazard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it worked out. And we kind of just knew each other everyone knew the role that they had yeah, but I lived, cutting I lived firewood out there where she I, I lived where she's from for a year and a half and uh she i think she had a very huge climate shock when she yeah. went out to i i I've, i was lucky enough i've been to alaska once before it was very mm-hmm. short i was in high school but i knew a little bit about what was going to go like what we what we needed to bring yeah and i saw i saw amber and i'm like damn she had the wrong boots. Yeah, wrong boots. So I did think, Nick, though, right? So did, dude, yeah. Nick. <laughs> oh, and, and speaking about the fire thing, too, um, oh, I love you, Nick. Uh, don't hate oh, me on this, buddy. but but we let... I don't want to say the weakest because nobody's weak. It didn't know for sure. But yeah. but but I think the Paul and I, we, we grew up on a, a household fire every day. Um, mm-hmm. Angie was pretty good at fire and everything like that, too. But 
I'm not taking anything away from Nick because he wanted to do it every day. He yeah. he started the fire every day, but he was probably the worst one to start a fire every day. Well, but you would let him do that. <laughs> oh no, right? absolutely. Yeah. And he wanted to, and yeah. he, I think he learned a lot. And that's good. That, that's how Amber was. So yeah. Amber was Nick in our camp, and it was vice versa. So yeah, it's like okay, well, not don't get in the way of that. They're mm-hmm. they have a task. Let them it's do it. Even too. if even if you're better at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, don't get here. Get out of the way. Let me do it. No, that's the wrong. Right, right. You right, can't yeah. do everything. You gotta you gotta be able that's to be the, dichotomy the bigger of leadership. person. Yeah. And like, okay, you want to start the fire? Start the fire. If you wanna if you wanna go out there and hunt, hunt. If you wanna go fish, fish. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely, I can do that. And you said that earlier on. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta let it go. Yeah. Yeah. We we each. And you'd mentioned something that <clears throat> the girls would go down and, and and they would forge and they would collect and they kind of built a bond doing that. Yeah. Um, I think everything we'd done, we'd done it collectively as a group. Yeah. Like if we were cutting wood, we all had a quota we'd meet. And we'd, oh, hit that. We had, yeah, we'd cut yeah. nine pieces of wood a day. Yeah, per, so, per person. Yeah, so, so we would cut, our, our length of measurement would be one hatchet long. Okay. So you cut one round that long and then you would split that in at least to halves, mm-hmm. depending on how big it was. And then you would do nine of those per person. Yeah. So, so we, if you could, I mean, some days obviously we knew like, Hey, energy's running low. If you can't do it, just do your best three pieces, whatever. There's, know. there's days that we had so much firewood that we didn't get it out of camp yeah. and the film crew would be like, y'all doing anything long, today? We're not going to get out today. And we're like, no, no we're, we're not moving. Calories. We had, and they're like, yeah. they would leave early. Mm-hmm. But I think because we had, you know, we, we had, a, we had duties, we had a job to do. We know we had a quota to hit. Mm-hmm. We hit that quota. We were done. So every day when we woke up, it was just like going to work today. Yeah. You know, we had a job to meet to pay our bills. Mm-hmm. And that's what we done. And at the end of the day, we, we completed those tasks. And we not only did we feel better about ourselves, but we built bonds doing that. Yeah. Um, and, and no one, like I said, Nick took care of the fire. And and we rationed everything, even how long we were going to burn a fire at night. Yeah. So we only burn a fire at night long enough to dry tomorrow's wood. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. To dry our socks That's right, and get yeah. us into bed. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So we, we didn't burn it all day long. No, we wouldn't burn it. It was so worth we, it. It was totally rotating constantly. Mm-hmm. So we had a system down. I mean, it just, it was, it was fluid. You yeah. guys had great structure in yeah. your camp. I yeah. mean, everybody, it just like, I recognize that from when I first walked in. You know, just from the the way the camp was set up, the fire, the the firewood, and your sleeping arrangements. You know, you had like we all I guess had one, two, three, and then you know, Paul, you were on the the end there, and uh, <laughs> he's, he's so tall. Yeah, yeah right. We, but, we were a team of short, but people. it works, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, a Smurf's got to sleep on one side, and you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the tall guy is gonna sleep on the end, I was smell everybody's in, feet, right? Yeah. But that's the feet. least of your problems. They're like, yeah, I was just second team all the way but hey thanks for carrying me anyway <laughs> what and another thing that people don't realize they think we boil our water every night because you know andrea got sick she drank from the water she got sick there was two streams there yeah, yeah. we had a stream that was crystal clear we never boiled our water yeah uh, we had a fresh water supply yeah. we had we, we were killing squirrels oh they don't show that mm-hmm. uh we had we had protein we we were not even sustaining no, 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 no. We, we were existing. We were yeah. existing. There's no, sur- no, no surviving. We got out there pretty late. Like in order to survive that, you have to hit the the crucial protein times. Like we, yeah. the salmon run stuff like that. And if you don't yeah. hit that at the the right time, you can't bank those food sources to get through winter. Right. What, so food gets scarce. One of the things that 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 gave us some hope is we had look. There's a learning curve to. You know, I'm a whitetail hunter all my life. I've yeah. hunted whitetail. Yeah. And and basically in hunting whitetail, I like to set up on funnel systems and mm-hmm. keep them catch yeah, deer in pinch points and hunt deer. Like I have a system that works. Now we're hunting these black tail deer and they're nowhere to me. There's nothing like a whitetail. They're, you know, the local guys call them in with a blade of grass. Yeah. And they'll call, and it's crazy. Yeah. And I had no idea how to do that. So yeah. it took a while to really get that. But we had found the deer. We had found how to call them in. Energy was super low. Yeah. But I felt that if we were pushed and we needed to go months and months, we would have killed a deer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I felt really confident in we could have stayed way longer. Oh, it, fish along we were a month, month and a half probably, but we could have we would have gotten a deer. You know, I missed one pretty close. So I felt really good if it was let's outlast. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I we digress a little bit. So let's go back to uh, let's try to wrap it up a little bit. We're, we're we're we now have you over at the camp. Yeah. You you spent the first night with us. Yeah. Um, let's get the elephant in the yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, the let's, let's, let's right? get, let's get yeah, what yeah, everybody yeah. wants. The to juicy hear. the juicy <laughs> stuff because that's this is actually a pretty controversial uh, yeah. topic and I've had people you know comment on it on social media. 
about it. Oh, oh, it wasn't fair. I thought you couldn't vote anybody off. And, you know, like I hardly ever respond to any of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I come over, right? I, you guys feel the way you do about me. You feel like I'm, you know, a, We're a, related. a team yeah. player. Yeah. So um, the next morning I was pumped because like, yeah, Paul, I, he, you know, so close to getting deer. I, sure. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's, you know, team force, Absolutely. go get us a deer or two, hopefully, or something. Uh, yeah. So we went out and we, we hunted and we, that was a fun hunt, believe it or not. Like I was just like, man, I, I felt like I had a renewed energy from one coming over. Now I'm with Charlie. I get to hunt with Paul, uh, good old Kentucky boy. I know he's a good hunter, obviously yeah. from just, you know, you, you getting close to one, nicking one, yeah. apparently mm-hmm. like shooting, was it over or under? Uh, yeah, he ducked so, the string, right? Yeah. Well, so Which, I mean, you know, I mean, giving what the 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 equipment we had, <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. you know, it's it was a very awkward position, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to deflect, I don't want to drive us too far off course, but it was a very awkward position. It came straight on, and I was just caught basically with my pants down. Yeah, and it was a weird lean back. It was so hard to get. My bow was canted. I couldn't get. I can make a hundred excuses. Yeah, but literally, okay. it it dumped the screen. Yeah, you yeah. just you just wanted to get us a little bit hungrier. That's all. That's I all it was. But it would have but, been a game changer oh, if absolutely. you had nailed it, uh, uh, 100, a deer. One hundred percent. And uh, yeah. you know, so just that, just knowing that, and knowing like you know, that's hunting, right? It's like yeah, fishing. It happens, if it, yeah. uh, my aunt, I was fishing with her in Florida just yesterday, and uh, said, you know, fishing weren't biting, but if the it wasn't called fishing, it's, it's it, or it's called fishing for a reason because otherwise it'd be called catching, right? You know? <laughs> right. So. Um, and the same thing with deer hunting, you know, especially with a bow, it's, it's the, one of the most challenging ways to hunt. And, um, just knowing that it, it pumped me up. So we go on our hunt, sign everywhere. We were yeah. up in that upper muskeg and we must've walked, man, what, five miles, man. four miles, something like that. It that, was, that walk back was treacherous. It was yeah. rough. Cause we were going through terrain that, you know, I wouldn't even take my horse through. It was it just, bad. Yeah, so, um, and then once we did get back, you know, it was kind of a relief because I, I could feel my body just breaking down uh, just on that walk, that uh, the walk before to come over to camp and then to get up and go hunt. But I was just operating on adrenaline. And then all of a sudden, right, uh, reality hit. Yeah. An arrow come across the river bank yeah. and uh, you, you and obviously Nick had yeah. retrieved it. And uh, once you take it from there, what had happened? So we we, we read it, and um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna be a little petty, but um, there's like the spelling was all over the place, <laughs> which is fine. I mean, again, we're hungry, so it yeah. doesn't really even matter. Yeah. But um, we didn't believe it. We 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 honestly didn't believe it. We thought it was a mind game or something. So that's why we wanted to talk to you about it. And yeah. um, we we had known that we didn't want that game. Yeah, and uh, we didn't want to play it. So we, we conversed with each other and, uh, we, we, we figured the best thing to do is get your side of the story from it before mm-hmm. we really jump to any conclusions, Sure, you know? And, yeah. um, that's where we, we basically hand you the note itself and let you read it so you can, you can defend yourself. We're not going to try to come at you sideways or anything like yeah. that. So he could have very easily did not every bit of it. Oh, uh, we could have. Yeah. And we, and we, uh, yeah. we wouldn't, we, we could have none to the watch. No, well, he's talking about me. Yeah, I, no, I yeah, could have oh, denied oh, oh, yeah, and just yeah, be yeah, like, no. no, I could have said, oh, she's crazy. Oh, she's we could have brushed it off. Yeah. yeah. We, we weren't even on like a, a oh, had no idea. friendly term. Well, people no, ask me that. I had someone ask me today on a conversation up here, uh, a good friend of mine named Sadie. She talked to me cause she just watched her show, watched the show. And she's like, why don't you just tell him no? I'm like, well, I'm already labeled as a villain and a thief. I'm not going to be a liar. Yeah, right? yeah. And I felt like honesty is going to prevail here. And I honestly thought, well, I'm going to come clean with you guys and let you know exactly what happened. Yeah. You know, and for those of you that have watched the show, obviously, you know, that, um, you know, the note was basically uh, targeting me as breaking the agreement. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, there were no rules to a point, but there had to be some kind of rule set in place after the fact that sleeping bags were taken. People dropped. Yeah. Um there was some altercations that yeah. um, luckily uh, nothing came of that between Javier and the girls to the point where it could have gotten way worse than it was. Mm. Uh, there's some behind the scenes stuff there that obviously, you know, a lot of people don't know about, but it, from seeing the show and from the perspective of the viewer, um, you know, it, it was, it was pretty rough. And then, so therefore that was okay. That's, that's not going to happen anymore. And so from my standpoint, of from the initial conversation across the river with you and Nick, 
uh, when I, when you guys accepted me and I'm like, okay, in my mind, it didn't really, I didn't make that switch mentally as being a Charlie. Yeah. I was still operating on the mode of alpha. Right. Gotcha. And so when, uh, when I went back to my camp, what I should have done and what I did done were two different things. And, uh, that's a hard pill to swallow. But from the point of you saying no drama, just go over there, come back. Okay. And on my way over there, I was thinking, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But when I got there, this is what happens when you let your emotions take control. You yeah. can't think straight. Yeah. I say that on the yeah, show, you right? Do. Yeah, you do. So how can I weaken them? How can mm-hmm. I just drive the nail in the coffin and say, take some right, sleeping bags. Yeah. yeah right. And that was yeah. my thought. That was yeah. my thought. I wanted to go and take sleeping bags. I wanted to do a bunch of malicious stuff. But then I thought, no, I don't want to do that. I've yeah. already done that. So I'm just going to, what can I do? And I was inside the shelter. I'm like, well, I'm just going to take one of the, the broadheads and just rip the tarp apart and they have to repair it or they're not going to have a good shelter now. Yeah. Yeah. As innocent as I thought that that was thinking in the process that there would be no repercussions, um, that caught up with me. Yeah. And so just to clear the elephant in the room, when I came over to you all's camp and uh, you guys accepted me, you accepted me, but you didn't accept my bullshit, yeah. right? So, and I understood that, right? And then when it came back to me as all the haters out there say, oh, karma got you good. Yeah, sure, however you want to label it. When that unfolded and you guys were just looking at me like, you guys felt like you got, like, I felt like you guys were all my brothers and like, you know, like I made a mistake and like my big brothers are like, dude, yeah, you shouldn't man. have done that. You shouldn't have beat that guy up on the playground. You should have walked <laughs> away. So for me, and for those of you that say, why didn't you just lie to Charlie? Well, because now I'm a part of a team. Why am I going to lie to these guys that just took me in? Yeah. Do I think that I'm so smart that I can lie to these guys that they're not going to pick up on that? And then what happens like if we're out there a week later and then they find that I lie to them and I did all this shit and they're like, then you're going to look at me and then I'm not only a thief, I'm a liar. Mm. So I looked at you guys and you guys wanted the guys on the truth. Yeah, this is exactly what happened. I did shred their tarp. And then speaks so, volumes about you as a man too. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. E- easily, you could have just lied. Oh yeah, absolutely. Could have won. Could have been there at the end and won, and no one would have known until that show was over. And, yeah. and, and mm-hmm. he chose to man up, own up to what he did. And, and I will tell you, this is one of the, probably the hardest parts of the show oh, for yeah. me. Like my heart literally uh, sunk, and we. It was not an easy decision. Aside, aside, and and I'm not. I don't mean this in a bad way, but aside from losing Angie, Angie. this was yeah. the hardest. The, this was the hardest thing that we had to do. And it, and it, you know what's crazy is that we had you for one day. Yeah, yeah. one day, man. If, if, if we it was the you. best twenty four hours of my <laughs> life on that damn show. <laughs> man, <laughs> the relief and the stress free, and just knowing that I was like, I, I thought at that moment when I crossed over, this is it. Now yeah. what? Yeah. Now we, what? We felt horrible about the decision, like. The, con- the connection was so quick. Well, the way yeah. the way I explain it to people, because people ask me about this, right? And so, you know, I'm like, okay, after I ex- kind of explain like what had happened, and I'm not making excuses. I'm not, you know, I'm not. It, this is just what happened, right? Yeah. So after all that, you know, you guys are tough. You're faced with a tough decision, right? I know. I I could tell you guys like me. I could tell you're like, yeah, this now we're four strong, four dudes, four men. Yeah. We're gonna kill it. Um. You didn't want to accept the liability that I brought with the team. Yeah. And that was a huge liability. And that was a hard pill for me to swallow. And honestly, like that music that they played when I was walking off the show, yeah. my aunt, she was like, what music is that? So I got to go back and like, I've seen the show. I've watched it yeah. twice now. So, you know, like that's a great song because it, it really is like me, like Nick, I think. Was it Nick that said he's feel like we've taken the walk to the gallows? Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like I'm walking to go, yeah, like yeah. string me up, dude. I'm done. But um and, and we we walked you out there as a team too. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was a hard decision across the board. It was um I just remember thinking like when you know you did something wrong and you gotta face up to it. Yeah. It's like God, this sucks, man. But I have to own this and I've got to eat this. And it's just, it's bittersweet. And I know that I'm with the wooden team. Yeah. And rightfully so, I was. And I I I say that to people like, regardless of the outcome, obviously I didn't win. But at the end of the day, right, when 
I had crossed over and I was with you guys and to see you guys win, yeah. I know that I'd made the right decision, even though I suffered for it in the end. And I tell people like I fell on my own sword. Yeah. You know, and it was, I know it was hard for you guys, obviously, but at the same time for me, you know, being so close and, and you, but yet so far so away. So long, dude. You were yeah. out there forever and I, I, I would have been so upset. Yeah. I, I really would have. And I, I'm not trying to like yeah. rub any salt. In but this is like a perpetual like behavior pattern for me that I've got to figure out because <laughs> in jujitsu, I, I could tell you a story back in 2016, I went out and competed at the master worlds competition in my first match. I go out there and like, I take this guy down really fast and, uh, I, he On stands, the world. he stands back up and I sweep him. I knock, I take him down and then he has his foot like right in like my, uh, hip region. And there's this, um, submission called an estima lock. Now in the rule setting at the belt level I was at, it's legal, but it's subjective to the ref. Mm. So I tap this guy out. It's the fastest submission I've ever had in my life at the world championships in jujitsu in Vegas. Immediately. I was disqualified. Oh, my wow. God. That was 2016. The following year, in 2017, my second match, semifinals, I go against a guy. I put him in a submission. I wasn't attempting to submit this guy, but we got into this entanglement to where his <laughs> leg was straightened and his knee, and you couldn't put anybody in a knee bar, right? Yeah, Hyperextension yeah. of the knee. So he verbally tapped because there was a little pressure on his knee. Immediate DQ. Oh, <laughs> dude. So that was 2017, right? I would have been so uh, mad. Yeah. Fast forward four years later, Outlast on the show in Alaska oh, with the winning team. Oh, Way to make me feel like absolutely. <laughs> like you make me feel like shit right now, dude. Like, no, man. But, that's This is me, dude. I'm taking oh. ownership of it. But so for those of you out there watching this, you know, it's like, obviously it's not everyone else. It's me. I've got something I've got to figure out. Right. So, um, now I've had a lot of, uh, wins in life. I've a lot of, I've had a lot of, uh, times where I've done really well in like jujitsu, you know, so, or just in life, um, in the experience, I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know, yeah. being able to meet you guys, being able to be here, have this podcast yeah. and what you're doing with this is awesome. So, well, you know, you. like I'm grateful, I'm happy and I'm really excited for you guys. And I was uh, super pumped to know that the outcome and when you guys yeah. won, I just know, like, I was like, yeah, I was with the winning team. Regardless yeah, if I didn't absolutely. get to a share in the winning and the high fives and the money, you know, life still goes on, right? It, it's going to go on whether you win or lose. And for you guys, you know, your pockets are a little bit fuller. And hopefully you guys have a good financial consultant to, <laughs> you know, uh, make sure you're doing the right things. My but, holding it down. but um, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, um, hats off to you. You know, congratulations for you guys well, you. for winning. You. you guys played a, uh, an awesome game. It was very strategic. And, you know, you made right choices. And at the end of the day, you know, you got to do what's best for yourself. You got to have yeah. a little self-preservation and, and people say, oh, well, you know, some people are narcissistic. Well, I think in some scenarios, like everybody is a little bit oh, yeah. to, to some degree and there's healthy levels of it, right? There's obviously unhealthy levels, but like you said, man, and it put chills on, in my, on my body when you said, I got to do for, for me and mine. Yeah. And I knew what you meant, you yeah. know, you, you're, you're a team player. But you're doing this for your family, that's right, and 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 for you as well, and you know, and like, I'll never forget like watching it for the first time, seeing you struggle, mm -hmm. right, and and people will say whatever they want to say about you, but what little bit I knew of you and and could see, because you get a read on people, and you oh, know yeah. when you suffer with people, like you can't fake that. It's yeah. not. It's the realest you get. It's like they say in, in jujitsu, like you can't. Um, the, tr the, on the mat, you can't fake it. Like the truth is you leave it on the mat. Yeah. And you know, when you, you drop down and you're like, Lord, give me strength. You were drawn on that and it gave you the strength, the fortitude, the mental push to get oh, yeah. going. Yeah. And that gave me chills just watching that. And so, you know, I'm like, man, I can identify with that. Cause there's many times I was out there like, God help me move forward. Cause I, I'm not physically capable of doing this. Yeah. Like in, in, it's mind over matter. You know, and you push through that. Yeah, you find that wall, and you and you hear, you know, different influencers uh, talk about that pushing through that wall. I've, mm -hmm. I've never faced that before. I've faced certain walls, but this was totally different. Like I really had to push myself beyond anything I'd ever done before, and whatever it, it, it happened. Yeah. Um, but you know, now that all of this is said and done, and we've 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 shows over, and we've all done this. Yeah, we want to show, but man. 
you are killing it right now. Like, so oh, yeah. <laughs> this show is so emotionally driven. Yeah. I get hate mail. Mm-hmm. I, I think Seth gets all I got, love. <laughs> I think well, I, I got that one, one piece. Negative, I got that one piece. One negative <laughs> yeah. comment about Seth, and it was just like, he's just beard is grasping ugly. at straws. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like you know, it was like he's short or something. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, he doesn't give a damn, I Been guarantee. Yeah. Life. Like, yeah, but right. it's, it's, it's how does everybody handle it? And to, to me, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a, it, it was a, a short dash, as my sister called it. My, my sister would always say, hey, you got the day you're born, the day you die. Let's fill that dash with everything you can do. Mm-hmm. So that's just a moment inside of that dash. Yes, and it's sir. gone. I don't care what everyone thinks about me. I care what my family thinks about me, and I care what my new extended family thinks about me. Um, us four are still super strong, yeah. and we talk every single day. Yeah. And, and I care about the people on the show. I want everyone to do well. But outside of that, I'm, I'm moving on. You, man, like, you know, I try to ignore what everybody's saying, and you have grabbed this by the horn. It just, I, I love, I love reading all of your, your comments. You take, you take nothing to heart, and it's light, and it's funny, and it shows. And, and I really hope that, it, it, and, and obviously it is. I mean, the, the camo you have on now, mm-hmm. is, that's, um, there's a lot of good stuff coming your way because mm-hmm. of the way you approach this. You're, you, you don't have this whole woe is me mentality. You're like, I did this. It was a game. I played it. This is how I played it. And I'm a man, yeah. and this is what I did. And and then you take your head. I've seen you turn haters. I've watched it. They're just talking just pure shit to you. And when you're done, they're basically like, you know what, man? You're right. You I don't feel that bad. Less. You, ain't, no, that you bad. ain't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people need to know just that. Just keep your sleeping bag away from me. <laughs> yeah. and it's the funniest Big Agnes, stuff. can we get a sponsorship? What's going on? <laughs> it's yeah. the funniest stuff. So, so man, we're we're – we're so happy to have been part of this with you and, and, and can't thank you enough for, for, for coming here and being part of this with us again. Absolutely. And if you, you know, I know you put a lot of stuff that you've learned from jujitsu. There's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that, you know, you're a black belt in jujitsu. You just came back from Pan Am in, yes. in Florida Pan competing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're top of the food chain. Oh, well, thank I'd you. say a bad motherfucker, honestly. One yeah. <laughs> One I wouldn't want to fight you. I mean, I got some weight on you and I wouldn't no. want to fight you. you know? So, so and, and you've been blessed in a, a, a lot of ways. Um, you're getting traction, man. Yeah. And you're doing thank stuff. You. What, what, we're, who are you working with right now? Is there anyone that we can give a shout out to and just say, hey, yeah. this is what we're doing. This is who I'm representing. Anything, anybody you want to holler out to? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank my mother, Donita Court. Um, she's uh, been a huge pillar of strength for me uh, growing up. And uh, without a, um, my mom, you know, I, I'd be probably a different person. I'd be lost. Uh, my father as well, um, John, who's a professional athlete. I've always looked up to him. And the horse racing industry has been a, a jockey for about 40 years. But, um, yeah, the show has opened up a lot of opportunities for me. And uh, I knew that it had the potential to do that. And, honestly, we were kind of just sitting on the fence, not really sure of, like, what the outcome was going to be or even if there was going to be a show. Because in some yeah. cases, things get stalled no, and, and it doesn't know. happen. But um, fortunate for me, um, you know, I had a company reach out to me just through – connections through the jiu-jitsu world and, and kind of putting my time in in that that area um there is uh, uh, a few companies that i'm working with obviously and i'll kind of just in no particular order um a company that i'm very proud and honored to be a part of that is 100 percent american made and i'm representing the brand today in the clothing uh is a company called origin uh they're based out of maine and uh they have affiliation with Jocko Willink, who is a former Navy SEAL. But Origin is a manufacturer of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu geese, and they're all made here. Because most of the geese that you see people wearing, like in, you know, the, the Pan Ams I just did, um, it, it's the gi Pan Ams. Most of the gi manufacturers come from um, Pakistan mm-hmm. or outside mm-hmm. the U.S. So uh, I'm happy to be partnered with a company. I'm an ambassador, a sponsored athlete, and I'm also affiliated with their... Um, uh, the Jocko Fuel, which is basically a supplement company, okay. proteins and and um, different drinks and what have you. So, uh, Origin, shout out to them. Do you have a uh, code this is, for that? This like is, protein? Come on now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I can I can post the link. I can give you the information. Yeah, so sure. you Absolutely. can yeah, use we'll put that my, there. yeah my code. Yeah. It's um, it's uh, Court Ten. So my last name C O U R T Ten. You get ten percent off on any of the products through Jocko Fuel 
or if you'd like this camo pattern, which is, um, this is the Ninja hoodie. And this is actually, they sent this to me for turkey season coming up. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they gave me the pants and the, and the hoodie. This is 100% wool, which is pretty nice. badass. Oh, wow. And being out in Alaska, you know. Oh, so, yeah, that's big. Yeah, you'll see me wearing this, <clears throat> excuse me, when I go to Alaska in the fall this year back. That's another story. But um, so Origin Gear uh, with the Jiu-Jitsu, they also make pants and they make boots and they do a lot of different things. Um, so denim and boots is what like was built on America as okay. uh, the, or yeah. the origin owner Pete says, uh, the other company, Lester river bushcraft, which is the company that made the wool anorak that I wore on the show. And a lot of company, a lot of people are reaching out to me. I probably have more than a hundred messages about that particular I, material. I've seen a lot of people oh, just yeah, reach absolutely. out and say, where did you get that? Yeah. yeah that, I was jealous. Yeah. I was actually jealous <clears throat> that you had that out there. I'm not going to lie. Pretty, I saw yeah. that. I'm like, man, I'm. It's, he got he got the sleeping bags. Can I get that from him? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great uh, it's a great piece of uh, clothing, and um, you know that's that's uh, there's three parts that I like to you know kind of remind myself of uh, when I'm out doing anything survival related, and it's it's my mindset, it's the tactics I use in the gear, and the gear is, yeah. is huge, you know. Uh, so Lester River Bushcraft, the wool interact that I wear, uh, there's a discount code for that too, which is Justin Ten. Uh, on the link with that. So uh, those two companies. There's also um, another company that I am starting to work with. It's not official, but um, there's some things in the work with the the hat that I was wearing as a wool hat. I'm probably not going to mention the name because it's not official yet, so I don't want to like put the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. But if you look at that wool hat, um, we're corresponding right now, and they want me to put some stuff together, and, and um, uh, hopefully something will come out of that. Uh, another company recently that is a health and wellness company out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, it's called Vi-Fi Wellness. And what they do is they offer uh, anything and everything to help rehabilitate uh, the athlete, um, anybody that's just want to come in. They, they have uh, so many different products that they go that they give and that they hand out. Like you can do a uh, sauna, uh, infrared sauna session. You can do cold water immersion in the cold plunge women get facials there you can do the float tanks so it's it's a all it's a very well-rounded uh place they have a hyperbaric uh, oxygen tank chamber and uh, they have so many things it's hard to list like i went and got a vitamin b12 shot before i competed yeah. they have uh ivs for if you want like a you know myers cocktail or if you're hungover and you yeah. need to get oh, yeah, like that you know you need to get your electrolytes so um that's vi-fi wellness in louisville kentucky nice and, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's some other companies I'm, I have in the works right now, nothing s- solid as of like the other companies I feel like confident to mention, but, um, yeah, things are looking up and, uh, I'm just excited and happy to kind of be the, the person that can, you know, be involved with these companies. Cause I, I don't partner or I don't align myself with any company that is going to, um, you know, just kind of like, I don't want to sell out, you know, like, yeah. oh, I'm just partnered with this company because of the show. Like I, I looked at origin and like, I've been a fan of theirs for a long time being in yeah. the jujitsu community. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that they started a clothing line because for them, you kind of have to meet a certain criteria, uh, being a hunter, mm-hmm. uh, being tactical if you like to shoot and then just being a jujitsu guy, like that was helpful. So, gotcha. um, I'm stoked on that. And so, yeah, I mean, there's opportunities there. Um, right now, I have uh, two great survival instructors back home in Kentucky, um, one of which a guy named Jason Hunt. He's been very helpful. He owns a company called Campcraft Outdoors. He's actually one of the reasons why I am connected with Lester River Bushcraft, and we have plans to uh, put together a survival camp training in Costa Rica, oh, which I go fun. down to there. Yeah, I awesome. go down to Costa Rica quite a bit. Um, and on that note too, he put together a, um, a class, a course called the Rambo course, yeah. <laughs> which everybody that pretty much grew up in the eighties and nineties that has seen Rambo first blood can live out their childhood fantasy oh, no, of becoming you get the Rambo. Bike and everything? What's that? Do you get the bike and everything? Well, no, what you, <laughs> what you're outfitted. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's, uh, it's a three day event in July 14th, 15th and 16th. And they introduce you kind of like you know, the first day do some firearms training, some self-defense and get you prepped for like shelter making and stuff like that. So you can kind of come basically not knowing anything, but if you have a little experience, that's going to help you. The second day, Saturday, I believe it's Saturday, it might be Sunday, but um, you're basically going to have 24 hours where you get outfitted with 
a, a Rambo knife, basically a hollowed out knife, yeah. right? Like yeah. a survival knife. And you're out in the woods for 24 hours. Okay. And you have to done escape. Yeah. Or I, I mean, I'm sorry. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to basically av- avoid uh, evade capture okay. for 24 hours. If you win, there's a two thousand dollar prize in in um, I think there's products and stuff. So it's it's valued at like two grand. I think okay. they're going to give some money out too. Now where's this happening again? This <laughs> is this is in Kentucky. So okay. it's in, what's the buy in? What's up? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, it's I believe it's three hundred dollars to okay. participate. Uh, the experience alone is going to be great. Oh, I'm man. more than likely not going to participate. I'm going to be part of the cadre to kind of help facilitate. Gotcha. Um, so we got to evade you. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, but what's interesting is that they're going to bring in, uh, you know, uh, law enforcement and people that are up for their, there's like an annual thing that a lot of EMTs have to do to um, continue their, their gotcha. education. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so like if you are captured, right, there's going to be a scenario that's unfolded like, okay, this guy has a broken collarbone. Now you have to tend to him and you have to move him forward. Oh, great. But that you're you're crazy. being hunted for 24 hours. Dude, we've got to do this. Yeah. I'm so doing it. I'm it's, doing it. it's the Rambo <laughs> survival course. And, yeah, and you get taken awesome. care of. Like, you know, like, they're going to feed you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but we're going to... No, I think actually you have to bring your own knife. Huh. But okay. you, you get outfitted with... Um, a survival kit that goes into the handle gotcha. okay. of your knife. And then you're out there, man. And it, I mean, I like, I, I don't know. I would want to do it, but just for the fun, because right, those fun. types of classes are really a lot of fun. But um, uh, anyway, so that's um, in July. So it's, co- it'll be here in a couple months, but, uh, and then, um, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be around, uh, you know, these, these guys that, uh, that helped me and helped train me before this show. Uh, I did a, you know, a private lesson with another guy named Craig Cottle who owns Nature Alliance School, and he's big in Kentucky. Mm. So those two guys are like my mentors. They're my go-to guys, and I just, I'm thankful to have them guys in my corner, and they and they've he- have helped, both of them have helped me with everything from like my social media to, uh, you know, sponsorships and what I should do, and, and one of them told me like, I should start a YouTube channel. Well, yeah, I might do that, but then it's like, okay, how many irons do I want to have in the fire? And I yeah. might, I might very well do that, but um, right now, the, what I'm focused on is is elsewhere, and so um, you know, I'm I'm happy to be a, a a part of it and and doing these things, and I've got some other things that I, you know, want to do uh, down the road. So the sky's the limit, and I'm thankful yeah. that you know we had this opportunity because I think being able to capitalize on these opportunities and being on the show um, is is it's going to open up doors for all of us really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just taking advantage of those. And it sounds like you've got a lot coming your way and well-deserved. Well, for thank you. 100% thank you, man. Sure, man. I feel for like, sure. uh, you know, if it wasn't for you guys and just the whole, the way the show went down and, um, regardless of the haters, I mean, you know, it's funny you'd mention that and I, I'm having fun with them. I don't take it serious. You yeah, know, I'm like, yeah. I honestly kind of feel sorry for some of the ones that feel so compelled to state their opinion based on an emotional response to a show. Yeah. And I get it because it drives emotion. And it's a and small, I, small percentage of the show too. Like mm-hmm. you don't even get to see everything that went on. But, but again, hats off to the editing of this. Oh, absolutely. You, you, you don't, if they hate or they love, they to touch some, to, to spark a, an emotional response with a game show. Yeah. yeah. You've done something. Yeah. And whether it's negative or positive, it's support. Yeah. So bring it. Yeah. I absolutely. welcome it. I mean, but. I, uh, I wanted to see if you guys wanted to, I had a couple people that sent me messages about the Q and A, about yeah. questions. Did okay. you guys want to segue into that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we take a quick break? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But let's take, yeah. Let's take a can break take and 10? then, uh, yeah, we'll do the Q and A. I think okay. it'd be good yeah, to sure. wrap it up. All right. We'll be right back with a Q and A session with, uh, Seth, Justin, and myself. All right. Right on. Great.